Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 State Relays Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022-23 State Relay Championships here, proudly sponsored by the Commonwealth Bank. We're here today at Lakeside Stadium for quite a little bit of a wet morning. Uh, we've had some heavy rain overnight um, into the morning and uh, we're uh, looking for a, a great start. We are going to be commencing the morning with the 4 by 200 metre finals for the boys and the girls. And then we'll be moving into the mixed events for those age groups as well. So... Out on the track at the moment, um, you'll be able to see in just a moment vision of the under nine girls waiting. Um, they look like they're ready to go. We will have two time finals of the under nine girls. The first time final will feature the athletes from the ninth to the 16th fastest uh, times from the regional rounds. Okay, they were the qualifying rounds for these. So out there you can see them star jumping and entertaining the crowd well and truly. And the final eight fastest competitors or teams will actually be featuring in the second time final. Um, for those watching for the first time, our event does include time finals. What they mean is that once all events are consolidated together, the fastest competitors from the two races are then placed into a final order from first to 16th. So 
Um, does take a little bit of time, but we do encourage you to jump onto Results Hub and we'll pop up the link to Results Hub on screen in just a moment. So you can follow the live action as well uh, throughout the morning as well as the afternoon. For those that are going to be settling in for the day, we will be featuring a morning and an afternoon stream. So our morning stream will finish around about, I think it's 11.30 or so, and then 11.55, and then we'll take a break and we'll start the afternoon stream. So keep an eye on socials, YouTube and Facebook. We'll actually have links to both of those streams. Uh, YouTube will probably be the best premium quality that you can actually view. So please, if you are struggling on Facebook, we ask you or recommend to you jump, jump over to YouTube. We'll be back with you in just a short moment to commence the Under 9 Girls 4x200 metres time finals. Ladies and gentlemen, the first event is on, on the track. 
And this is our under nines, time final uh, number one in lane one. We have Horsham. Lane two, Warrigal. Three, Box Hill. Four, Doncaster. Five, Geelong. Six, Diamond Valley. Seven, South Melbourne District. Six. And in lane eight, Albury. Nice clean start for the girls in these 4 by 200 metres for the under nine girls. This is the time final. Four competitors will run 200 metres each, passing the baton between each other at the 200 metre mark intervals. So running off really strong at the moment is the athletes in lane four from Doncaster. They're closely followed by Box Hill there in three. You can see on the... We'll just get some vision of the centre of screen at the moment, but that competitor on the outside at the moment is the competitor from Albury. So we'll just get some camera vision to move out in just a moment. So a nice clean change there by the athlete from Albury out in lane eight. But we'll hopefully just pan out to the vision in just a second of the other competitors in this event. So coming around in past the first 300 metres, we've got Aubrey running really strong, but making a move at the moment is Diamond Valley out there in lane six, closely followed by the Geelong athlete there in lane five. So it is the athlete from Aubrey out there in eight at the moment. They're going to possibly change first. So really good running there. They've probably come in as one of the slowest qualifiers, but not a lot of competition necessarily out in their region. Diamond Valley and Geelong probably close to second changing. Box Hill, Doncaster, South Melbourne District, and running really strong at the moment is Warrigal. Our competitors from Horsham in lane one have just taken the baton as well as they make their way around for their fourth and final change. So it is our Geelong competitor there. Going to the cross over there, you'll see the cones over there by the 1500 metre start line where the athletes will start to make their way into the inside lanes. But it is going to be Geelong taking the baton first here in the final change there. Doncaster in second. So having a quick look over the shoulder there for the Geelong athlete, the idea and the concept here in this event is to actually make sure that you are running as fast as you possibly can. Your times are not based on winning. It's based on the fact that you need to be the fastest competitors going into the range of athletes for the seeded performances. But it is Geelong coming into the finish line now. They're going to take out first. Unofficial time of 2.26.68. Second goes to, to Diamond Valley. Third, Box Hill. Fourth, Doncaster. Five, Albury. Six, Warrigal. And seventh, looks like our team there from South Melbourne. And then in eighth place, Horsham. And ladies and gentlemen, the next event on the track is our second time final for the age group of the under nine girls. So we'll just see if we can get some vision of lanes two and one also in the camera shot. Athletes from the inside in lane one, we have Raven. On your in lane marks. two, Sandringham. Three, Bacchus Marsh. Four, Keelor. Five, Mentone. Six, Geelong. Seven, Knox. And in lane eight, Caulfield. Now, our fastest qualifier in this event comes through from lane three. That's the Bacchus Marsh team. They're actually a very Set. convincing, probably a good few seconds Stand clear up, from the rest of the athletes from other teams. They come in with a seated time of 2.22.15. 
The second fastest qualifier from the same region is Geelong. So they came in with a seeded time of 2.24.95. So do expect the athletes there in the centre of the screen for the uh, lane cone three in the red and the yellow and black. On your for marks. Marsh to quite strongly contend this one. Set. Down up, girls. Back to your cones. Lane one, break. First and final warning. On your marks. Set. And a nice clean start for this t second time final. So just keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is the top eight fastest qualifiers from the regional rounds. Running really strongly there at the moment. You can see the athletes in Geelo from Geelong there. They're sitting in lane six, just passed over the shoulder of their competitors in lane seven, chasing down their competitor in lane eight. But as they may move up the back straight, we can see quite a move coming from the Bacchus March athletes in lane three, as mentioned before. They've just gone past the shoulder of their athletes just on the outside there so we'll just see as we make it away to the change box there probably one of the first to change was the athletes from Geelong so as they make their way around now in this second leg of this race we're seeing Bacchus Marsh make a convincing move right up on the inside keeping in mind they are in a stagger so as they come around to the, f the front straight it is going to be Bacchus Marsh that you would expect to change first as per their competitors from Geelong, the two would have run together at the regional round. So they've got a bit of a feel and an idea of where they need to be placed. Out on the outside, Caulfield running a really strong race at the moment as well. But it's going to be Bacchus Marsh, Geelong, almost even in changes. Caulfield, Keelor, Bentone, Sandringham, Rabin and Knox just taking their way. But as they make their way around for this third leg, it is Bacchus Marsh out in lane three running really strongly at the moment. Chasing him down, as we mentioned before, is Geelong. So as they make their way down, it is the athlete from Bacchus Marsh that is just now going to move in from the stagger. It is a little bit confusing sometimes for those younger athletes having the concept of understanding to move into the inside lanes. So as they make their way down, she's going to change first. It's going to be Bacchus Marsh, then Geelong. I think it might be Sandringham next at the moment. So as they might have been Keel, I apologise. So it is going to be Bacchus Marsh. Geelong's going to chase them down. This is going to be a hot race to finish off. Let's see how they go. Is she going to have enough fuel in the tank? Our athlete from Bacchus Marsh running on the outside a little bit further of a distance is the Geelong athlete. She's run off strong. They're going to really tussle this one out to the end. Bit of a kick there by the athlete from Bacchus Marsh on the inside. They're going to come up to the line. And based on their seeded placings, they are going to take it out. Backs Marsh first, Geelong in second. It might be Knox in third, Verabin, Caulfield, Keelor, Mentone and Sandringham. That's the second time final of the under nine girls, four by 200 metres.
Next event on the track is event two. This is the four by 200 meters for the under nine boys. This is time final number one. Introducing the athletes from the inside, we have Coburg in lane two, Ballarat. Three, Wodonga. Four, South Melbourne District. Five, Shepparton. Six, Whittlesea City. Seven, Ringwood. And in lane eight, Melton City B. On your marks. Set. Nice clean start in this first time final of the under nine boys. Off to a really great start at the moment is our fastest qualifier Wodonga. They're in lane three at the moment, so they are the fastest qualifier in the positions from ninth through to sixteenth. So keep in mind these are the eight um, slower qualifiers of the sixteen. But as they make their way up to that first change box at the moment, you can see running strongly at the moment is the athletes from Ringwood in lane seven. They look like they're gonna just change first. We can't see those left far right of screen, but as they do change in first at the moment, it is gonna be Ringwood chased down at the moment by the athletes from Whittlesea City as well. So that's the athlete there with the yellow stripes across the chest in lane Six it is. So as they come down, it's going to be Whittlesea City looking like they've got a bit of a lead on Ringwood at the moment. Moving well up at the moment is the athletes from South Melbourne on the inside and also Shepparton there in lane five. So we'll get a little bit of it better vision in a moment. It is going to be Whittlesea City going changing first. Shepparton closely followed by South Melbourne, Ballarat, Coburg running really well at the moment and Mountain City on the outside in lane eight also running very strongly. But it is the competitor at the moment from Whittlesea City just being passed by our fastest qualifiers for this race in Shepparton there in from lane five. So Shepard and Coburg running really strongly at the moment, keeping in mind they are from the stagger. So as they come and the athletes make their way into the inside lanes, Shepard and are just going to hold off from Coburg for now. Ballarat's moving up really strongly at the moment as well. But as they take it first, it'll be Shepard and Coburg, Melton City, Ballarat, they're your first four at the moment that are coming around for the final 200 metres. Coburg trying to make some moves there on the Shepparton athlete here, but also the athlete from Ballarat just taking over the shoulder of the Mountain City athlete there in for third place. But as they come into the final stages of this race with about 50 metres to go, it is going to be our athlete from Shepparton. Shepparton going to take this one out. Unofficial time of 2.22.72, Coburg in second. Third will go to Whittlesea City, then Ballarat, South Melbourne, Ringwood, Melton City, and finally Wodonga there for eighth place. So that's the first of two time finals for the under nine boys. So next event on the track is the under nine boys. This is time final number two. Your top eight competitors from the regional rounds. Athletes from lane one, we have Caulfield in lane two, Cranburn. Three is, Cor sorry, Caulfield B, that was in lane one. Caulfield A in lane three. Lane four is Williamstown A. Five is Berry. Six is Geelong. On your mark. Sandringham. And in lane eight, we have Knox. So eight starters.
set. So nice clean start for the athletes here in this second time final for the under nine boys. Running really strong at the moment. The athletes on the inside four lanes. So you'd be looking out for three, four, five, and six. They come in as your fastest qualifiers from the regional round. Caulfield are the fastest qualifiers. They came in with a seated time of 2.15.85. So that's really good to see. They're running really strongly at the moment. But out in lane six, Geelong, they were the second fastest and they're running really strong. They're going to get to that baton change potentially first, very close with Williamstown, Caulfield. And also, we, uh, I think it might have been Berwick, two amongst the mix there in those fastest four. So as they make their way around, it's very even between those inside four lanes, as we mentioned before. Their seated times are only a second apart to a degree, with Caulfield having probably about a three-second advantage. Knox also in lane eight running really strongly, but remember that stagger does um, deceive you a little bit in vision. Caulfield now making a bit of a move now. They're going to change in first as they come up to this third change. Okay, Caulfield first have taken that one. Williamstown, Geelong, Knox, Berwick, Sandringham, Cranbourne, and then Caulfield B. But making their way around with the third leg at the moment, it is going to be Caulfield from lane three. They'll get to those cones there on the stagger at the moment and you'll see the athletes make their way to the inside lanes. Williamstown second at the moment, Geelong. And then it looks like Sandringham as well. But as they make their way to this final change, it's going to be Caulfield running very strongly. Geelong, Williamstown, Knox. They're your four to keep an eye on now. They are a little bit different to what the fastest qualifiers were. But coming into the final stages of this race, it is going to be Caulfield running very convincingly strong out in front. They're going to be really tough to beat, but Geelong's going to dig in as much as they can just to really close that gap. Third place is going to be hotly contested. What a run by the athletes from Knox. It's going to be Caulfield in first, second to Geelong, third for Knox, fourth Williamstown, fifth Berwick. Sandringham, Cranbourne and then making their way to the final stages of the finish line we do have our athletes from Caulfield coming across the line. Next event on the track is our girls under 10, 4 by 200 metres. We have eight starters. Great to see all our competitors are here today. So no scratching so far. Athletes from the inside, we have Ballarat in one, two is Shepparton, three Geelong, four Williamstown, five Diamond Valley, six Ringwood, seven Yarra Rangers, and in lane eight we have Chelsea. On your mark. Nice clean start for the athletes here. Fastest qualifiers in this particular time final come from lane six. But in all honesty, anything from three, four, five, and six, you'd expect them to come across the line almost identically. Their seated times are between between the second of each other coming through. So it's a hundredth of a second um, as they qualified at their regional rounds. So moving well at the moment are the athletes out in lane seven, I think it is. It's a Yarra Rangers athlete there. You can see they're in the full white far left of screen. 
at the moment. They're possibly going to change first, but also Geelong, it looked like, from the far right of screen. So as we move around towards the stagger, the athletes in shot at the moment are Yarra Rangers. Then on the outside, we've got the athletes from Chelsea catching up a little bit here. Ringwood also running very strongly there in lane six. But starting to make a move up on the rest of the field is Diamond Valley from lane five. You can see the athlete there really making some ground as they move into this third change of the 4 by 200 metres. Hoping for nice, clean changes at the moment. I don't think we've seen any drop batten so far, which is really good to see. So Chelsea looks like they've changed first. Diamond Valley, then Geelong. Possibly then might have been Ringwood as well. But as they make their way around, Ringwood are running really strongly on this second last bend of this event. Now they'll move their way around into the stagger at the moment. So watch them make their way and move towards the inside lanes. Their competitors are positioned in order from their lanes over at the 200 metre mark. So it's Ringwood, Chelsea, Diamond Valley. Ringwood are going to take this one first. Chelsea, then Diamond Valley and Geelong. Expect Geelong to run a really strong last leg in this event here as they make their way round for the final 150 metres of this event. So the order hasn't changed much, as we mentioned before. Were those outside lanes running really strong? But it's Ringwood digging deep at the moment, hoping to take this one out. They are racing the clock, remember. It need looking for a fast, fast time in this one. Late charge by Yarra Rangers at the moment, moving into fourth place, but it's going to be Ringwood here taking this one out in first place. Chelsea coming across the line in second. Diamond Valley just holding off by Yarra Rangers for third. Fifth goes to Williamstown, sixth Geelong, seventh goes to Caulfield, and in eighth place or eighth position is our athletes from Shepparton. So that's the first of two time finals for the under 10 girls. Next event on the track is our second time final of the under 10 girls. So this is your eight fastest qualifiers from the regional round. Seven. So nice clean start. Let's hear from lane one. We have Caulfield, two Cranbourne, three Knox. In lane four, Sandringham C. In lane five, Sandringham A. In lane six, Box Hill. Lane seven, Mentone. And in lane eight, Bacchus Marsh. Fastest qualifiers overall in this event is the athletes from lane five, Sandringham. So not to be confused with the ones in lane four, but it is the outside lane there with, I think, the white ribbon you might see, the darker-haired young lady who is moving up on her competitor on the inside just, just marginally in front at the moment. So they do change there. Very closely at the moment. Out running strong at the moment is a Mentone athlete in lane seven as well. But you can see in the centre of field at the moment, it is Sandringham, Sandringham, and also Box Hill running very strongly right now. J Cranbourne, I think you might find it is in lane two at the moment. Also running a really strong leg in this event. But as they make their way up towards the third change, Box Hill looking really strong right now. They're going to change almost sequentially at the same time as Moorabbin. We'll see who's got the cleanest change of the three at the moment. Bentone first. Box Hill a little bit behind. The two Sandringham athletes as well running strongly at the moment on the in middle of the of shot. Knox in lane three also running very well. But as they make their way, we did mention before, there is a little bit of a slider edge to the Sandringham team in lane four. They're going to come at the crossover first at the moment. Sandringham, the second team in lane five, which is Sandringham A. Then I think we've got Box uh, Knox and Cranbourne. 
So Knox just making a little bit of a move, trying to get that spot there. But Cranbourne and Sandringham almost change at the same time. But it is the athletes out in front at the moment. That's your knock, your Sandringham A team at the moment. She's going to come into the front straight with a bit of a strong lead, but there's going to be a challenge on for second and third between Cranbourne and Knox at the moment. They're stride for stride at the moment as they make their way, but the Cranbourne athlete just got a little bit of an edge there at the moment. But it is going to be Sandringham first, Cranbourne in second, Knox third, Sandringham in fourth, Bacchus Marsh, Box Hill, Mentone, and just bringing up the final placing now across the line is coming to shot from the left of screen. Here's our team from Caulfield. So congratulations to the girls under 10, 4 by 200 metres. Please keep in mind that live results are available on Results Hub. We'll bring on screen in just a moment in the bottom right-hand corner. The link to Results Hub, that's where you can see your consolidated results for the time final event. So remember, it's not necessarily that second time final that can be the place getters in first, second and third. It could actually even be, we've seen it before, a team from the first time final sneaking up for a medal position by running a really nice, quick and fast time. So www.lavic.resultshub.com.au. Now, moving very fast into the next event on the track, we do have our boys under 10, 4 by 200 metres. We do have eight starters, and we'll introduce the field to you very shortly. So nice clean start for these athletes here. From lane, lane one, we have Wodonga. Two, Ballarat. Three, Whittlesea City. Four, Chelsea. Five, Caulfield. Six, Keelor. Seven, Seaford. And in lane eight, we have Craigieburn. As they make their way along the back straight at the moment, running really strongly at the moment is the athlete. Second left is green, which is Seaford. But making their move on the inside from lane four, we can see Chelsea running a really strong final stage of this first leg. They're possibly going to change first there. Chelsea, you'll see them in the centre of the screen, but just on the outside of them, Caulfield looked like they might have just snuck in with a quicker change. The athlete there in the black and white, that's from Keelor. They're running really strong right now. They're going to come in probably first at the moment into the, the front straight here of this second leg. So at the moment, it's Caulfield, Chelsea... Sorry, Keelor, Chelsea, Caulfield, Doncaster. The inside of competitors from Wodonga and Ballarat also running very well, as are those from Middlesea City in lane three. But as they make their way around for this third leg, it is going to be the athletes from Keelor, just with a slight edge on the athletes from Chelsea and Caulfield there, just coming in to shot now left of screen. As they come across from the stagger, it's just... Keelob with a slight edge, but Caulfield are just going to pass them on the inside now with the athlete from Chelsea also making their way from the outside into this final change. Almost identical with changes there, but I would pick the athletes there from Caulfield in first at the moment, Chelsea, then Keelor. Just a couple of metres between the two as they make their way now with 100 metres to go. Do expect a late dash by the Chelsea athlete running very strongly at the moment as they come into the finish. These two would have run against each other at their regional rounds, only marginally different. But it is going to be Chelsea taking this one out over Caulfield, Keelor in third. Whittlesea City just going to hold off for fourth. Wodonga, Seaford, Craigieburn. And Ballarat. They're your competitors in the first of two time finals for the under 10 boys.
On your marks. Nice clean start for these athletes here in this second time final, the under 10 boys from lane one, Yarra Rangers, two, Diamond Valley, three, Geelong, four, Mentone, five, Knox, six, Box Hill, seven, Campbell Mulvin, and in lane eight, we have Cranburn. So do expect a really strong run by this Mentone team here in lane four. So a bit of a fact here for you. Now, they actually now have two of the four boys in Team A that competed in the 200 metres at the state championships last year. So that was first and second. Oh, sorry, they took out first and third respectfully. So they do have a strong contingency here. One of the athletes from their team used to run with a local centre, I think in Brighton it might be, if I stand correct. Um, but as they take their way, they're going to be challenged down by Knox at the moment. Knox are in lane five. There's not a lot between the stagger, but they know that they have to dig deep to really supersede this Mentone team who did come in with the fastest qualifying time of four seconds faster. So a little bit of ground to make up there for Mentone. Clean change by Knox, clean change by Mentone, Moorabbin, Box Hill, Geelong, Diamond Valley, Yarra Rangers. And on the outside, Cranburn running strong too. But as they make their way around, heading into this final change, we're starting to see a little bit of a move from the Mentone team. We did mention that they were four seconds faster just a few moments ago. So we would expect their possibly third and fourth leg to be probably possibly two of their quickest. So you can see in shot at the moment, Mentone, Knox, Geelong and Diamond Valley. Mentone are going to take this one around at the moment. Being chased down by Knox, they're not going to give up on this one at all. So this is going in for, the you know, obviously the first and probably the gold and the silver medals at the moment, you would suspect. They're running very strongly. But it is Mentone at the moment, just holding off, but a really late charge here by the athlete from Knox at the moment. He's digging deep, but we have got our competitor out in front from Mentone, winding it up here. He's opened up that lead by another couple of metres now. So Mentone taking out first. Really great strong run by Knox in second. Third will go to Geelong, fourth Diamond Valley. Late charge there by the athletes from Box Hill for fifth. Yarra Rangers, Campbell and Mulvin, Cranburn taking out our final event for the under 10 boys, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is our under 11 girls, 4 by 200 metres. Once again, we have a full field. On your marks. Nice clean start for these athletes here in the under 11 girls, 4 by 200 metres. From lane 1, we have Albury, 2, Ballarat, 3, Warrigal, 4, Warnable, 5, Cranbourne B, 6, Sherbrooke, 7, Mornington, and in lane 8, Knox. Fastest qualifiers for this event come from lane 4, which is Warnable. So they were the fastest qualifier uh, in the positions between 8th and 16th for this event. So going to that first change, just changing first probably would be Warnable. Warrigal running closely behind. Sherbrooke also in the mix, as well are the athletes from Mornington out there in lane seven. Just far left of screen at the moment, you can't quite see them, but as they come around to the stagger, it is Knox who have actually running off really well at the moment also. 
They are on the outside lane, but as a stagger can be deceiving, we do see the athletes from Warnable moving up really well. So keep this will probably be an interesting one to watch once you see the results come through from the heat from the time finals to the final. Would expect Warnable to possibly move into the top eight, possibly if they run a really strong race. But it's going to be Warnable, Knox, Cranbourne, Warrigal, Sherbrooke changing off first. Ballarat and Albury. So as they make their way around, heading in towards the final change, just past the stagger there, it is the athletes from Warnable crossing over first. Warrigal and Cranbourne in that mix also, as is Sherbrooke in the far back right of screen. But it's going to be Warnable. Nice clean change there for the girls. Cranbourne, Warrigal and our athletes there from Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke running a really strong leg at the moment. The athletes move from fourth into third, chasing down this Warnable athlete out in front. Would have been an early start for the Warnable girls to make their way out here this morning. Hopefully they stayed the night in town beforehand. But they're going to make their way down. 50 metres to go. Warnable opening up that lead. Cranbourne holding off for second place. Rorigal really fighting in for third at the moment. Sherbrooke might just come back on the line, but it's going to be Warnable. Cranbourne, Rorigal just holding off for third. Sherbrooke, Knox. Mornington and Ballarat very close for that position in sixth and seventh. And Albury coming across in eighth place. So that's the first of two time finals. Unofficial time for first place, 229 point, I think it was two. And we'll be back with you shortly in for the final time final of the under 11 girls. Next event on the track is the under 11 girls. This is time number two. So the on your marks. Set. Just wait for a restart on that one. It does look like there was a little bit of unsteadiness. Lane six. Break. First and final warning. So we can take this opportunity yep. to introduce the field team now. From lane one, we have Mentone. Two, on your marks. Cam, three, Berry. Four, Box Hill. Five, Cranbourne. Six, Geelong. Seven, Diamond Valley B. And in lane eight, Doncaster. Set. start this time here for the athletes. Fastest qualifier in this event comes from lane three in Berwick who are running very strongly at the moment. You'll see them just to the far right of screen now in that shot. As they make their way down it is going to be Berwick moving up on the athletes from Sandringham on sorry from Box Hill on their right shoulder but running also strong at the moment is Geelong there in the center of screen. So it could be Geelong possibly that might change first. No, it might still be the athletes from Berwick. Berwick will go first. Geelong, also Doncaster strong, run, running very strongly at the moment as well. But as they make their way, it's a really strong leg by the Diamond Valley athlete there in lane seven. That's a Diamond Valley B team. Making their way into the straight, you can see Berwick with a bit of an edge. It is a stagger, remember, so they're going to probably change well and truly first against their competitors on the outside. So it's going to be Berwick probably going first, Geelong possibly second, but a bit of a really strong 
move into the change box for Diamond Valley. So Berwick, Diamond Valley, Cranbourne, Box Hill, Mentone, Sandringham. And Doncaster there out in lane eight as well. But it is Berwick sporting the pink socks there, running really strongly at the moment as they move into the crossover here for the final stages of this 4 by 200 metre event. So making their way at the moment also is Diamond Valley running really strongly there as they come into possibly second place at that change box, but just moving to the outside. Cranbourne's going to take it second. Berwick well and truly clearly first at the moment. And running at the moment strong in third place is Box Hill. So it's Berwick, Cranbourne, Box Hill, Diamond Valley, Geelong on the outside moving past, and also Mentone as well running very strongly. Mentone, keep an eye out for them. They actually might even jump into third if they're very lucky. But it is the Berwick athlete running really strongly at the moment. They've probably got about 20 metres on their fellow competitors from Cranbourne. Berwick are going to take this one out first. As mentioned before, Cranbourne second and Mentone snuck home for third. Geelong, Box Hill, Diamond Valley, Sandringham and Doncaster. So they're your eight competitors in the second time final of the under 11 girls. Next event on the track is our under 11 boys, 4 by 200 metres. Now, this, there is a slight change to this. There are going to be three time finals for this event. Um, so there are a couple of vacant lanes, but that is done on purpose. So we have competitors from lanes 3, 4, 5 and 6. And those competitors are Horsham in 3, lane 4, Williamstown, lane 5, South Melbourne District and in lane 6, Sandringham B. On your marks. Set. Nice clean start for the athletes here in the first of three time finals for the four by 200 metres and the under 11 boys. Running strongly at the moment is the athletes in lane five from South Melbourne District. 
And on the outside, Sandringham also running very well. Williamstown starting to make a move on the inside at the moment. They're running from lane four. And just to the far right of screen, we have our athletes from Horsham. So going to change into this first is going to be Sandringham, Williamstown, possibly Horsham and then Sandringham. So it is the athletes from South Melbourne. They are in the red and white hoops at the moment, running very strongly on this bend. But as they make their way around, heading into the third change, it is still South Melbourne District running very strongly. Williamstown sitting in second, Sandringham in third, but closely followed by Horsham. The stagger's a little bit deceiving there, as we mentioned before. Nice change there by the athletes from Williamstown. Might have had the better change than the athletes from South Melbourne, Sandringham and Horsham. So they're the four competitors you can see. You can probably see it's a race between two and another separate two as well. But coming in to the crossover point now, South Melbourne, they're going to move to the inside lane with probably a good 10 metres or so in front of the athlete from Williamstown. So Sandringham will take this one nice and cleanly first, uh, Williamstown in second in this final change. And it looks like Horsham and then Sandringham in third and fourth, respectfully. Now, coming into the final changes, nice strong running by the athlete from Williamstown at the moment. Just gone over the shoulder of the South Melbourne competitor there. Probably resembles how they ran quite closely at their regional round as well. Those two teams would have run together at regions. But Williamstown are going to take this one out in first. Unofficial time of 2.08.03. South Melbourne in second, Horsham in third, and Sandringham in fourth. Next event on the track is our under 11 boys, time final number two. So a little bit different to the others. This There's three time finals in this age group. The athletes will run from lanes three through to seven, which you can see on screen right now. And the athletes from the inside, we have Wangaratta in three, Caulfield in four, Box Hill in five, Bendigo in six, and Williamstown B in lane seven. On your marks. Set. So nice clean start for these athletes here. Athletes from Bendigo, they're in lane six, running very strongly at the moment, as are the athletes from Caulfield in four as well, just to the far right of screen. We'll see if we can get that vision here of the follow competitors from lanes three and four in just a second as we come into this first change. We'll have a look here to see who gets the cleanest change out of Williamstown and Bendigo. Williamstown just first, Bendigo, then Box Hill and Wangaratta, it looks like. We've also got the athletes from Caulfield there just coming into shot also. But it is going to be Bendigo at the moment taking this one down to the third change. Or the second change, my, I beg my pardon. So it is Box Hill there, sporting a very cool mullet there, the athlete. He's going to quickly change the baton there. He's going to pass to his fellow competitor. A little bit of a messy change, but they're going to clean it up now. Box Hill will go into second for that change. Wangaratta, Caulfield and Williamstown very closely between the two of them together. But it is the athlete there from Bendigo with the very bright pink shoes. Just taking a bit of a look over his shoulder there. The athletes from Wangaratta in three are making some ground as our Box Hill, who came through as our fastest qualifiers for this group of athletes in this event. The three of them are going to probably change very close. It'll be who has the cleaner change here to go through. 
probably Bendigo just over Box Hill and Wangaratta. So as they come around, the three are very tightly contended this race. A little bit of a clip heel there between Bendigo and Box Hill, but also Wangaratta just holding off at the moment. Box Hill's going to have another go at this one and go on the outside as well. He might have to go out to the outside of lane two to get past the two competitors on his inside. But as they make their way towards the final stages of this race, it is Wangaratta just slightly holding off over Bendigo. Bendigo might just get there. He's got a little bit more dig in these little... Shovel there, but he's going to take this one across the line. Bendigo, Wangaratta, Box Hill. Williamstown and Caulfield. So they're your competitors in the second of three time finals for the under-11 boys. Next event on the track is our third of three time finals for the under 11 boys. On your mark. So these are your eight fastest competitors from the regional round. Will the athletes make a start and then we'll introduce the field to you. Set. Nice clean start for these athletes. Probably pick of the bunch might have been one from lane two, but from the inside we have Campbell Mulvin, Collingwood, Geelong, Keelor, Berwick, Sandringham, Mornington and Oakley. Strong running at the moment by Keelor there on the back straight. You can see them there with the black long leggings at the moment in the centre of field. Black and white cross check at the moment as they pass the athletes on their outside, which are Berwick and almost Sandringham as well. So we'll see how they go into this change here. Just making it there. A the lot of energy put into that leg there by the athletes from Keelor. Keelor, Berwick starting to run really well at the moment as well on the in on the outside of Keelor. They're going to come up over the shoulder. So a strong by this competitor here in this second leg for Berwick. Out on the outside at the moment, we have the athlete from Oakley also running very strongly, but it is the athlete from Berwick really making a good move and a strong race by the second part of his leg for the Sandringham athlete out in lane six. So it's going to be Berwick, Sandringham, Keelor. I might even then say Oakley running really strongly at the moment and Morabin on the inside too starting to make a move. But as they make their way into this crossover, it's going to be probably Keelor just with a tiny upper edge on the athletes on the outside from Sandringham, I think it might be. But as they make their way now into that change, this is the final change, the final 200 metre leg of this race for the under 11 boys, Sandringham, Keelor, Berwick, Keep an eye on those three here. As well as Mornington running really strongly there in fourth place. But it's going to be here at the moment, Sandringham. They came through as the fastest qualifier overall, but there's really not a lot of time between the first, second and third and teams from their regional rounds. So it is going to be a strong finish here by Sandringham. They're going to take out first. Keelor in second, Berwick in third, Mornington coming home for fourth, Oakley fifth, Geelong sixth, Collingwood seventh and Campbellwall Mulvan in eighth place. So they're your under 11 boys, four by 200 metre event. Next event on the track is our under 12 girls, 4 by 200 metres. So we do start to see possibly athletes using starting blocks in these events. So we'll just allow our competitor in the uh, lane one to set up her blocks. And we'll introduce the field to you. We might take this chance now to introduce the field to you. From lane one, we have Diamond Valley, two, Shepparton, three, Box Hill C, for South Melbourne Districts, five, Geelong B, six, Bendigo, 
Seven, Campbell or Malvern. And in lane eight, we have Pakenham. Fastest qualifiers in this particular race probably come out of lane three, which is Box Hill. They come with a seated time of 2 minutes 6.99. So clean start here for the athletes here in these first of two time finals for the under 12 girls. Very even first leg here, possibly Box Hill with just a bit of an upper edge on the fellow competitors in this race. South Melbourne also running strong there from lane four at the moment from the middle of screen. So you can see them in the red and white hoops. Box Hill just slightly behind them to, their, to the right of screen. As they make their way into the first change, we'll get a bit of vision on who might be changing first. Could actually be South Melbourne just. Also, Campbell and Malvern had a really clean change there, as did Box Hill there on the far right of screen. So it is the athletes actually from Bendigo there in lane six running very strongly at the moment. They're going to come down into the second change with a little bit of a lead on the rest of their competitors. So it's going to be Bendigo changing first. Box Hill slow, uh, closely followed behind. Geelong, bit of a stretch to make that one there, but they're going to make it nice and clean. Campbell Mulvin on the outside, packing them also running really well. And just coming in the rear at the moment is our athletes from Shepparton. But as they make their way around there, it's a very hotly t contested race at this moment. Bendigo still out in front at the moment. Box Hill sitting in second. Diamond Valley in third. Geelong then South Melbourne. They're the competitors you can see on screen just at this moment. So it is Bendigo changing first. Box Hill. Diamond Valley will take advantage of that. Little bit of a messy change by Box Hill there to just come on the inside right now. Then you've got your competitors from Geelong, South Melbourne, Campbell, Malvern, and also Packenham there just at the rear. But it is Bendigo being chased down by the athlete from Diamond Valley at the moment as well. Diamond Valley going to try and test this one out, as is Box Hill currently sitting in third. But it's going to be Bendigo holding off to take out first place in this time final. Diamond Valley second, Box Hill third, Geelong, Shepparton, South Melbourne District, Pakenham and Campbell or Malvern. Next event on the track is the second of two time finals for the under 12 girls. So uh, once again, if you've only just recently joined us, these are your eight fastest qualifiers from the regional round. So fastest qualifier in this race from the regional round comes from on lane three, mark. that's Geelong. So they come with a seated time of one minute 54.41. The next fastest would possibly be then from lane five in Cranbourne. So a little bit of a false start there, a bit of unsteadiness from the athlete in lane three. So I'll introduce the field to you now. From lane one, we have Sandringham, two, Horsham, three, Geelong, four, Ballarat, five, Cranbourne, six, Berwick, seven, Knox, and in lane eight, Doncaster. Lane three, break, first and final order.
on your marks. Set. Stand up, please. So we can just see our starters offering some assistance there to the athlete from lane three, just to making sure that um, she's aware of the start, starting zone area and just um, presenting herself to the line so that that way the starters can have a nice, clean start for this race. On your marks. Set. So a clean start this time for that race, which is the second time final of the under 12 girls. So strong running at the moment by the athlete from Cranbourne there in the centre of field from lane five. I think that might be a competitor we normally see quite a bit in our sprint event, Simone from Cranbourne. So she's running really strongly at the moment for this first leg, as are the athletes from the inside in lane three and four from Geelong and Ballarat, respectfully. So as they go into that first change at the moment, it's going to be Cranbourne changing in first from her vision. Can't see too far to the right of screen, but Cranberry are going to take that one first. Geelong in second, possibly. Doncaster on the outside running very strongly also. Berwick, too, are in that mix as well. They do come through as our possibly our fourth fastest qualifier. Berwick it is, but it is Cranberry at the moment. They come through as the second fastest qualifier over Geelong, so it's going to be hotly contested between these two competitors. It's really not a lot of time between the two. We'll see who gets the best change out of this. Probably Geelong in first, Cranbourne. Then it might have been Sandringham on the inside. And also Berwick in that mix. So as they make their way around for the third leg of this event, it is Geelong out in front at the moment. Running really strongly right now. She comes across the break line now. Cranbourne will come across in second place currently and Sandringham sitting in third from lane one. Looks like Knox might be there in fourth at the moment, but Geelong, nice, very clean change there they've had. They're going to take this one around with about 150 metres to go. The athlete here running this final leg is absolutely steaming home at the moment. She's going to come around with about 100 metres to go. She's probably got a good 40 metre lead in front of her. We'll see if she can open that up. The Cranbourne athlete currently sitting in second. Oh, sorry, my apologies, Geelong sitting in second. But it's going to be... We'll change that around. Geelong taking out first. Cranbourne in second. Sandringham seeking over on the inside for third place. Over Knox. Then Caulfield. Horsham. Berwick and Doncaster. So taking that one out, Geelong, they were our fastest qualifiers and they ran extremely well in that event. Next event on the track is our under 12 boys, four by 200 metres. So we do have lane four vacant, it appears. So athletes from Doncaster haven't quite been able to fill a team. So we'll introduce the athletes and also possibly lane one as well. So lane one was Horsham. Big shout out to our athletes in lane two, Lavinch and Jinjiro, they're from the uh, New South Wales sort of borderline space, very close to Albury. 
So for those athletes, it would have been an incredibly early start. So congratulations to them and we thank them for making the trip out here today. Clean start for our athletes here in this first of two time finals for the under 12 boys. Running strongly at the moment, the athletes in lane six is Williamstown. They're in the blue and yellow to the left of screen. Just passing over the shoulder of their competitors from Coburg in lane seven they have. Moving strongly along the back straight there. We'll see how this stacker goes as they move into this change. This is the first change of this 4 by 200 metre event. Nice clean change by Williamstown. Seamless almost. Packenham there on the outside also changing very well as well. You'll see Coburg sitting in there, but also in the inside now, Karayo and Geelong are moving up on their field. <coughs> but coming into the front straight for the second change, we do have Williamstown running really strongly at the moment. Coming with a seated time of 2 minutes, 3.68. That is almost the quickest of the group if we take out Doncaster, who have scratched. So clean change again by Williamstown, running very strongly. They're going to take that second change just over possibly, I'm going to say Karayo, then Coburg and Pakenham. Lavington and Deer are also making a late dash for this one here as they move into the third leg of this event. But it is Williamstown well and truly out in front of their fellow competitors at the moment. Probably got about a 30 metre lead, also f almost 40 metre lead there on the fellow competitors. But it is Williamstown, then it looks like Carayo, Geelong making a bit of move up on the left of Carayo at the moment. Then we've got Pakenham, Coburg and Lavington. But Williamstown take the baton first in this final change. Carayo second, Geelong, Pakenham, Coburg and Lavington, Jindira. So a little bit of a tussle left the minor places at the moment for the competitors. They come into the final stages of this race. But it is Williamstown. They've led from the start, running very strongly at the moment into the final stages of this event. We'll leave the photo finish for possibly third place at the moment as they come up to the, the finish line. But it is Williamstown in first. Carraro in second. Oh, a little bit of a trip of, over his own feet there in the final stages there for the athlete from Coburg. Pakenham also. Congratulations, Ted, to those athletes in the boys under 12, 4 by 200 metres. Next event on the track is our second time final for the under 12 boys. We have a full field here of the eight fastest on qualifiers from the regional round. False start there. It looks like the athlete out in lane eight. A little bit eager to get off on his way. The athlete from Geelong. So we'll let the athletes make their way lane back eight, to break. the start line. And, final warning. and we might take that opportunity as well to introduce the field to you. So from lane one, we have Campbell or Malvern. In two, Whittlesea City. Three, Werribee. Four, Knox. Five, Geelong B. Six, Berwick. Seven, Caulfield, and in lane eight, Geelong. Fastest qualifier for this event, which is the second time final, so this On is the fastest mark. overall qualifier, comes from lane three, which is Werribee. Set. 
her. Clean start this time by the athletes in the under 12 boys, four by 200 metres time Stop final number two. So as they make their way around, it's very even between these competitors. The first runners are running a very consistently strong race right now. So they make their way down to the first change box. Might be a little bit of an outer edge at the moment. So the athletes in lane sevens and eight at the moment there from Caulfield. They might change first possibly, but running strongly into the change as well is the athlete from Werribee and Knox. So Werribee might have got to that one first in actual fact, Knox. Caulfield as well and Geelong. So as they come around to the front straight, you'll see the crowd starting to build over there in the marshalling area space and also down on the front straight fence line. But an athlete from Caulfield running really strongly at the moment, but is the athlete from lane three from Werribee. They're going to change first Werribee just in front of Caulfield. Geelong, both Geelong teams, Knox, Whittlesea City and Campbell or Malvern. But Werribee is going to take this one over into the final change with a convincing lead at the moment as they head towards the crossover zone. They are from lane three. There's only a couple of lanes to cross into from the inside. Whittlesea City look like they're coming in second right now, as is Knox running strongly, as well as Caulfield at the moment too, just about to nudge into second place. Last competitor from Werribee now taking the baton. Then we've got Whittlesea City, Caulfield coming in third. Sorry, Knox, it might have been just in front of Caulfield, but it's Werribee, Knox chasing Werribee down. Whittlesea City currently sitting in third at the moment, and then we'll have Caulfield sitting in fourth. Geelong in fifth, both Geelong in sixth, Campbell Mulvin in seventh, and I think it was Berwick sitting there currently in eighth. Knox are going to take this one over there. He's just run down the Werribee competitor in this final stage of this race. So it's going to be Knox coming in first. They came through as a fa third fastest qualifier. Werribee in second, Whittlesea City third, Caulfield fourth, Geelong A and B in fifth and sixth respectfully. Campbell or Malvern and Berwick. They're your final competitors in the under 12 boys, four by 200 metres. And in usual Melbourne fashion, we are experiencing a little bit of light showers here at Lakeside Stadium. Not a lot of wind at the moment, though. To, uh, we'll see, see if we can get a temperature check here. It's a, uh, it's a, a balmy 16 degrees here at Lakeside Stadium. No one would think uh, in the weeks we've had preceding that we'd actually be almost sitting in the depth On your of marks. winter. I don't think we've had a Relays uh, championship before that is this cold. But we're moving now into the under 13 girls 4x2. So we'll just get them get a start and then we'll introduce the first timed final for you. Set. So clean start for the athletes here from lane one. We have Keel or B, Ballarat in two, Sandringham in three, Collingwood four, Sale in five, six is Bendigo, seven Geelong B, and in lane eight, South Melbourne District. So we'll just see come into shot. We've got all eight competitors here in this event. As the rain starts to team down on these poor young ladies as they make their way into the second change. First change might have gone to Geelong there on lane seven. Running very strongly at the moment. The athletes from Sandringham in lane three. They come in essentially with probably the fastest seated time. But all the athletes from lanes three, four, five and six come in with a 2.01 qualifying time. So as they make their way into this first change, it looks like Bendigo possibly just after Sandringham. So Sandringham, then Bendigo, Sale in third, Collingwood fourth, Keelor fifth, Geelong South Melbourne and Caulfield. So as they make their way around to the crossover point, it is the athletes from lane 
I think it might be Sandringham from lane three there at the moment, just in front of Bendigo. Collingwood sitting in third right now. You can see the lights in the back straight start to engage from the darkness of the rain clouds passing over Melbourne. But it is Bendigo at the moment. They're going to take this one into the final stage of this race. Hotly contesting against Sandringham, currently sitting in second place. Collingwood still holding on to that third place. Then we have South Melbourne, Geelong, Keelor, Sale and Corf. It might be actually, I believe, Ballarat there. But coming across the line, taking out first, will be athletes from Bendigo. Sandringham in second. Strong finish by the competitors from South Melbourne. Not quite enough to catch up to Collingwood. Geelong, then Keelor. Leave photo finish for that final minor place, which is between Sale and Ballarat. But strong running by the under 12, under 13 girls, my apologies, in the 4 by 200 meter event. Next event on the track is the under 13 girls, four by 200 metres. This is time final number two, so your eight fastest competitors from the regional round. Introducing the field to you from lane one, we have Cranbourne, two, Diamond Valley, three, Mentone, four, Box Hill, five, Caulfield, six, Geelong, seven, Keelor, and in lane eight, we have Oakley. Wayne, can you drop down? Thank you. Fastest qualifiers in this event come from lane six mark. in Geelong. They come with a seated time of 152.78. Next fastest qualifier probably from lane three in Mentone, 156.55. So do expect a strong run by Geelong in this event. Set. So clean start for the athletes here in this fine final time final of the under 13 girls. As mentioned before, we did expect Geelong to run out nice and strong at the moment, but they are being contested also by the athletes from Caulfield on their inside in lane five. So as they make their way up to the first change, let's have a look and see who we can get. Captured as getting the baton first. We'll just see how we go. It's probably maybe Geelong and Caulfield almost identically. The two are going to run neck and neck. Caulfield just on the upper hand at the moment as they come in to the, fr the front straight of this second leg. So it's going to be Caulfield, Geelong. Looks like Box Hill, then Keelor based on the stagger. Mentone possibly and then Oakley on the outside. But as they come into this third change, sorry, second change, it is going to be... So he's got the better change of the two. Geelong just marginally over Caulfield. Box Hill, Keelor, Mentone, Oakley, just in front of Diamond Valley and our athletes from Cranbourne in lane one. So it is Geelong at the moment. They're going to come across at the stagger first. Box Hill are going to just pip at Caulfield. They're in second place right now. So Geelong, Box Hill, Caulfield, Sandringham, Mentone. Big stretch there by the athlete to get that baton across. But it is Geelong at the moment running out very strongly. We did say they come in with the fastest seeded time. Victorian best performance for this event is 145, which they're not going to quite get. It is 145 right at this second. But it is going to be Geelong taking it home in first. She's got about 30, 40 metres in front of her competitor in second place right now, which is the athlete from Box Hill. Caulfield will take out third. Mentone will come across the line in fourth, just in front of Keelor. And in sixth place there we'll have Cranbourne, Oakley and Diamond Valley.
And next event on the track with the lovely sound of thunder in the background here. Wayne, can you sit lakeside? down? Thank you. I can't see the lane six. It could actually be even um, artificial thunder from children running on the on one of the ramps here in front of us. But with Melbourne, we wouldn't be surprised if it was externally as well. So next event on the track is the under 13 boys, four by 200 metres. We've got time final number one on the track. Lane three, stand up, thank you. Lane three, stand up, thank you. On your marks. Set. Clean start for these under 13 boys, four by 200 metres, time final number one. From lane one, we have Ballarat, two, Nutter Wadding, three, Marabin for Diamond Valley, five, Keelor B, six, Werribee B, seven, Kit Coburg, and in lane eight, Caulfield. Strong running by the athletes in the centre of field from Diamond Valley at the moment. They're going to probably change over first as we come over into shot. So it's going to be Diamond Valley clearly first at the moment with their changeover. Possibly Werribee then by Karaya, but Keelor also, Marabin and Nutterwadding running really strong at the moment. But it is Diamond Valley right out in front at the moment. Keelor starting to peg them back just a tiny bit, as is Werribee out in lane six. So the longest riding Keelor athlete may just sneak into this change first, but not quite. Diamond Valley just in front. Keelor, Werribee, Marabin. Nutterwadding, Corio, Caulfield and Ballarat on the inside. But as they make their way down, rain's starting to stop here at Lakeside. So we've had that little shower come through and hopefully that'll be the last for the day. But it's Diamond Valley sitting out in first at the moment. Then we've got Corf, uh, Keel or Werribee in that mix as well. So those two change almost together. Corfield on the outside and Rabin on the inside. Nutter Wadding. But it is the athlete from Diamond Valley. They've run really strongly from the start of this event all the way to the finish. The rest of the field are going to chase them down. So he's going to run for his life, this young man out in front. He's going to be chased down for the minor places as well from Rabin and Werribee. Corfield, Nutter Wadding and even Karaya, trying to, Coburg trying to peg them back. But it's going to be Diamond Valley taking it out first. Keel or clear second. Third, I'm not going to call, but I'm going to say Coburg might have just snuck that home of Werribee, Marabin, Nutterwadding, Caulfield, and Ballarat. But that third place, fourth place, and fifth place, wow, that was a good close finish. Probably the best close finish today thus far. Next event on the track is time final number two of the under 13 boys. So this is your fastest eight qualifiers from the regional round.
set. Stand up. Lane five. Break. First and final warning. On your marks. Nice clean start for the athletes here in this second time final of the under 13 boys. As mentioned before, the athletes from lane one, Berwick B, two, Sandringham, three, Geelong, four, Echuca Moama, five, Cranbourne, six, Berwick, seven, Box Hill, and in lane eight, Collingwood. As they come into this first change, do we expect some really strong running going to be from Cranbourne and Berwick? They're two lanes apart from each other. But it is Berwick at the moment looking like they've got the upper hand on this one at the moment. They're being chased down by the athletes from Box Hill. Cranbourne probably a little bit off the pace at the moment, but making up some significant ground as they move through this second leg of this event. Geelong running very strongly at the moment on the inside as well, as is Box Hill on the outside, Collingwood a piece, and also a Chukamawama. But as they come into, these two are going to be almost identical. Expect them to run leg to leg. They would have done the same at region. Cranbourne possibly just on the inside, Got a very, very small margin in front of Berwick. But Berwick's longest stride at the moment on the outside is going to take over the Cranbourne athlete's shoulder. Don't cut Geelong out of this. They probably don't know what to expect of the Geelong athletes. But Berwick and Cranbourne have run together before, so they'll know what to expect of their competitors going into the final leg of this race. So it is Geelong coming up on Berwick, but Berwick change first, then Geelong, then Cranbourne, Keelor. Sandringham as well. So as we come around into the final stages of this race, it is going to be the Berwick athlete. He's going to be challenged by Geelong. They're not going to give up quite yet. Cranbourne sitting in third at the moment. And the athlete there from Box Hill in fourth place. Berwick are going to take this one across the line first. Geelong in second, Cranbourne third. Box Hill making their way across the line now. It's going to be a hot tussle for fifth place in our second Berwick team, Sandringham, Achukamawama and Collingwood. Next event on the track is the under 14 girls, 4 by 200 metres. So we are moving towards the latter stages of these individual gender 4 by 200 on metres. We'll be following on in the next round of our uh, block of events with the mixed 4 by 200 metres. So we'll allow this one to get a start and then we'll introduce the field to you. Set. Stand up, girls. Back to your cones. Lane four, break. First and final warning. Lane eight, unsteady. On your marks. Set. Stand up, girls. Back to your cones. Lane four, unsteady. Yeah. 
on your marks. Set. Nice clean start this time for the girls under 14, 4 by 200 metre event. Fastest qualifier for this event comes from Horsham in lane 6. So you'll see them make their way up through the pack at the moment. But running strongly at the moment are the athletes from Werribee there on just to the second right of screen right now. As they come into this change, it is going to be the athletes possibly from Werribee taking the change first. The SMR team also running very strongly, but it is Werribee. They're going to be chased down by Horsham on in lane six, as well as the Warnable team out in lane eight. So as they come down into the closing stages of this second leg, it is going to be Werribee taking the baton first. Craigieburn possibly second at the same time as Horsham. Then we've got SMR, Warnable and Berwick. As they come past the crossover now, the Werribee athlete... Just digging in for the final stage of this race. She's going to be very closely followed by the athlete from Horsham and that of Box Hill. Uh, sorry, Cray, uh, Craigieburn, I believe it might be. So it's going to be Horsham, Werribee, Craigieburn taking in third, the third change there. So these two athletes out in front look like they're going to really tussle this one out to the finish. But it is Horsham out in front. They came in with the fastest qualifying time of couple of seconds quite in front of Werribee. So it looks like Werribee run a little bit of a stronger race than they did at their regional round. We have one casualty just down on the front straight now. We'll see if she can get back up and finish off this race. will be a really gallant effort. Horsham come across the line in first. Werribee in second. Berwick in third. Warnable in fourth. SMR in fifth. And ladies and gentlemen, give this young lady a round of applause. She really took a fly over there before on the ground. And she's got up to make it across the line. The athlete from Craigieburn in that final place. So that's the first of two time finals for the under 14 girls, four by 200 metres. So our next event on the track is the 4x200 metres for the under-14 girls. This is time final number two. Athletes from the inside, we have Waverley in one, Geelong B in two, on your marks. Coburg in three, Collingwood in four, Keelor in five, Geelong A in six, Knox in seven, and Diamond Valley in eight. So it's a full field here for our under-14 girls, 4x200 metres. So clean start for the girls in this final time final, the under 14 girls. Running strongly at the moment, the athletes from Keel are in lane five at the moment. They do possibly come with our, looks like our second or third fastest seated time of teams in this event. But it is going to be the athletes from Keel or, and it looks like also Collingwood running strongly at the moment. So Collingwood are going to take that first, then Keel or Geelong, Diamond Valley on the outside as well. 
really strong running by these athletes in the inside lanes at the moment. So that's in shot right now. Really great vision there by our cameraman. Collingwood at the moment in front. Geelong making a bit of a dash just past the Keeler athlete in the final stages of this 200 metre leg for these girls. But Collingwood's going to take the baton first in this one. Then Keelor, Geelong, Coburg, Diamond Valley, Knox, Geelong and Waverley. So heading towards the stagger crossover point for these athletes. The athlete from Collingwood still holding on to that lead out in front at the moment. Then we've got Keelor, Geelong and Coburg. These four will be potentially your place getters in the final stages of this race. So Collingwood take this first. Geelong, A and B, chasing down. Co uh, Coburg, it looks like they're sitting in fourth at the moment as well. Now the teams between Geelong, six in the, the young lady with the hip number, number six at the moment, who's the first Geelong athletes, that's their fastest qualifier in this event at the moment. See if she's got enough energy just to snip into, into Keel or at the moment but I don't think she's going to quite get there. Keeler are going to take this one out. Geelong in second, Coburg third, Collingwood fourth. Great finish by Knox in fifth, then Geelong, Diamond Valley and Waverley. So they're your competitors in the under 14 girls, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is the under 14 boys, time final number one in the four by 200 meter event. So we're edging closer to our 15s, 16s and 17s, which I think makes us potentially a quarter of the day through. I don't even think it's that. I think it might be a fifth. I think I'm just um, fooling myself if I think it's any more. <coughs> So we'll introduce the athletes for you now. I'm just making sure we do have a full field, which it looks like we do. So from lane one, we have Craigieburn, two, Melton City, three, Diamond Valley B, four, Yarra Rangers, five, Keelor, six, Geelong, seven, Knox, and in lane eight, we have Warrigal. Fastest qualifier for this event from the region rounds comes from lane six in Geelong. Closely followed by Yarra Rangers from four. So keep an eye out. Always, uh, traditionally, you'll see our fastest competitors always in the lane six. On your mark. Six. That's the way the seating works. Set. Stand up, boys. Back to your cones. Lane two, unsteady. Lane six, unsteady. On your marks. Nice clean start for these athletes here in the first of two time finals for the under 14 boys.
As mentioned before, we did have our fastest qualifiers coming out of lane six, which is the Geelong team, and also Yara Rangers from lane four, which is the taller figure in the inside middle of field. Craigie Byrne running really strongly in this league at the moment from lane one, so they could actually potentially change first, but we'll just wait till we get to that change box just to see. They've just come into vision now. It is Craigie Byrne they're going to change first. Then possibly Geelong, Knox, Warrigal, and then Geelong. But also, Keelor, wow, what a powerful run at the moment by the athlete there in lane five. It's going to make up some significant ground on the other competitors. But as they come into these, into the second change, it may even just be Keelor just taking a leisurely stroll out there in this race. Athletes run a really convincing leg there. So Keelor, Geelong, Melton City, Craigie Byrne, Diamond Valley, Warrigal, Knox and Yarra Rangers. So... Whilst Yarra Rangers might have come with a quicker time, they might have had a bit of a muddle change there over that first change box. I didn't quite see how that went. But as they come down into the third leg at the moment, it is the athlete there from Keelor out in front. Craigie Byrne running really strongly at the moment, as is Geelong, Diamond Valley and Melton City. Keelor are going to take this one first into this final change. Then Craigie Byrne, Geelong, Diamond Valley. They're your top four at the moment. Just in shot there at as we move our way towards the finishing stages of this event. Now, the athlete from Keelor needs to remember that if he gets a fast time, he's actually going to move significantly up into the top possibly eight finalists of this event. Strong finish here by the Diamond Valley athlete and also Geelong. They're going to tussle it out for second. They're stride for stride just in front, Diamond Valley. But Geelong might just sneak across the line. Geelong in second, Diamond Valley third. Craigie Burn, Knox, Warrigal. Yarra Rangers and Melton City. So that's the first of two time finals for the under 14 boys, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is the time final number two of the under 14 boys. We have a scratching from lane seven, which is Caulfield. On your marks. Athletes from lane one, we have Doncaster. Two, Cranbourne. Three, Diamond Valley. Four, Waverley. Five, Campbell Melbourne. Six, Berwick. And in lane eight, we have Geelong. Very convincing fastest qualifier comes from lane five, Campbell or Malvin. They've got a good, Set. possibly four or five points <coughs> on their fellow competitors. So once again from the inside, Doncaster, Cranbourne, Diamond Valley, Waverley, Campbell or Malvin, Berwick and Geelong. So strong running at the moment by the athlete from Waverley there from lane four. Probably just a touch in front of the Campbell or Malvin athlete, but both still digging deep into the final part of this first leg. But Waverley going to take it first, then Campbell or Malvin. On the outside, Berwick and also Geelong. Running very strongly. But Campbell or Malvin, as we mentioned, possibly the stronger of the runners so far, running this second leg, making their way towards the second change. Very clean running here by that Campbell or Malvin athlete, in actual fact. They're going to well and truly change first right now. Possibly then Geelong, just over Berwick, Diamond Valley, Waverley, Cranbourne and Doncaster. But it is Campbell Mulvin. They're going to come across this crossover probably with a really good lead of probably about 40 metres, I might say. 35, 40. Berwick are going to come across second at that change over Geelong. Possibly Diamond Valley as well as 
We'll just see who that Waverley, I think it might have been. But coming into the final stage of this race, it is well and truly Campbell and Malvin out in front. Let's keep an eye on the VBP for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Victorian best performance is 136. It's going to just miss out on that. We've gone just 136 now. But nonetheless, excellent run by Campbell and Malvin, taking out first. Second place is going to go to Berwick. Third, Diamond Valley. Fourth, Geelong. Fifth, Waverley. Six in Cranbourne and seventh place in Doncaster. So that is the second time final for the under 14 boys, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is the under 15 girls, four by 200 metres time final. So there are two time finals in this age group. And introducing the athletes from the inside, we have from lane one, Williamstown, two, Craigieburn, three, Chelsea, four, Yarra Rangers, five, Altona, six, Whittlesea City, seven, Keel or B, and in lane eight, we have Mentone. So just allow the athlete out in lane seven just to prepare her blocks. And the starters will resume with commencement of this race by the whistle, possibly, or we've done the whistle, so we'll go straight into the start. On your marks. So clean start for the girls under 15s. Time final number one of two. As they make their way down the back straight, fastest qualifier this event comes from Altona. So we'll just see where they're placed at the moment. They will be in a more prominently purple coloured uniform. So they're from lane five. We'll just see if we can capture those changeovers a little bit more. But Mentone, you can see on the far left of screen, then we've got Whittlesea City, Geelong. Altona starting to make their move up on the fellow competitors now. But that's Yarra Rangers there, sitting just behind Mentone. Altona moving up now into this change. So we'll see. It might be Altona first. Then we've got Yarra Rangers, Mentone, Chelsea. Then Whittlesea City, Keelor. Craigieburn and Williamstown. Make their way around towards the crossover zone. It is Altona still out in front at the moment. Then we've got Yarra Rangers, Mentone, Whittlesea City, Chelsea and Keelor. So Altona take that change first. Mentone, Keelor, Chelsea, Whittlesea City. So it is going to be a chase down of this, this front competitor from Altona for the rest of the field. Running on the outside really well at the moment, well at the moment is the athlete from Whittlesea City, who I do believe might be by the name of Dina. I you know she's a very strong competitor in a lot of other races, but if um, anyone wants to stand me correct, please do. So it is Altona. They're going to take this one out first. Whittlesea City in second, Chelsea third, Mentone fourth, Yarra Rangers, Keelor, Williamstown, and Craigieburn bringing up the field of the under, under 15 girls, four by 200 metres.
Next event is the under 15 girls. Four by 200 metres. On your mark. Time final number two. Athletes from lane one, Coburg. Two, Caulfield. Three, Keelor. Four, Knox. Five, Sandringham. Six, Ballarat. Seven, Geelong. And in lane eight, we have Waverley. Set. Clean start by these young ladies in the under 15 girls. Four by 200 metres. Probably a good start by Ballarat there in lane six and also Sandringham in five. Running very well down the back straight. But also the athletes from lane seven in Geelong really... They're probably going to go into this change first, I would potentially suspect. We'll see how they go, but it is Geelong there. They're in lane seven, deceivingly, on lane eight, which is Waverley. So Geelong will take that one first. Then we have Caulfield, I would suggest. Uh, Ballarat, I would suggest. Very similar uniforms between those two. You'll see it trip me up a couple of times today. But Geelong coming in to this second leg, running very strong at the moment. Sandringham, you can see they are on the stagger. Keeping in mind they are in lane five, so they're moving up on the rest of the field at the moment. So I wouldn't be surprised if they change just in front of Geelong. But no, very close. Geelong might have just slipped that in front. Sandringham chasing them down at the moment. Waverley, Keel or Ballarat, Knox and Caulfield. So Caulfield running really strongly too at the moment. They are in lane two. So as they make their way along the back straight, it is Sandringham still in front. In front of Geelong. Then it's going to be between Keelor, Caulfield and Waverley there, as well as I think it might be Knox in that mix. But almost seamless change there for the athletes out in front. Making their way to the final stages of this race. Do you set, tend to feature a lot of our fastest 200 metre runners for teams in this final leg. And it almost seems like they're going in fast forward as they come past. But it is here in front of screen. The athletes from Sandringham are running very strongly at the moment. Their seated time is 1.48. They're almost going to clock that again. 1.49.19 taking out first. Second goes to Ballarat. Third Geelong. Fourth Keelor. Fifth Waverley. Sixth Knox. Then Coburg and Caulfield. So that's the final under 15 girl event for the 4x200 metres. And next up, we have the under 15 boys.
Next event on the track is the under 15 boys, 4x200 metres. So we mark. do have five starters in this race. So you do tend to find that the groups are harder to fill um, based on the qualifiers. But the qualifiers you see here, um, there's no scratchings in this race. Um, the five starters are the five registered starters. So from lane one, we have Leon Gather. Sorry, from lane three, Leon Gather. Four, Berwick. Five, Keel or B. Six, Waverley. And seven, Williamstown. Set. So a clean start by these athletes here in this event. Really strong running at the moment by the athlete from Waverley. They're coming with one of the fastest seated times, the second fastest seated time um, besides Leon Gather, who are from lane three. Got a bit of clear sky at the moment in Melbourne. There are looks like some grey clouds starting looming in the background. So we'll see how many of these races we can get through clear for now. But Waverley going to take that first change just in front of possibly Keelor, I think it might be. But very strong running by the Waverley athletes here in this event. Now, they know that how this all works in time finals is that regardless of winning the race, you really need to get a quicker time so you can actually move into that group of athletes that sit in the top eight. Oh, and we'll see if he can get back up. And that is an excellent recovery there by the athlete there. It is sometimes slippery out on the track, but obviously just regaining your composure and getting up and knowing what you have to be done. Um, full accolades go to that young man from Waverley. So as we can see they're making their way around at the moment, the Waverley athlete still just in front Leon Gather might have just come into first place right now. Keelor sitting in third and just not far looming behind are the athletes from Williamstown and Berwick as well. Leon Gather are going to change that one first. Waverley going to take second. Keelor third. So that's a Keelor B team at the moment. Do suspect that possibly we have another Keelor team making their way in the next race, which is Keelor A. So as they make their way towards the final stage of this race, it is the athlete from Lee and Gather running very strongly at the moment. They're going to come across the line. Unofficial time of 1.46, just an edge for, uh, faster than their regional time. Waverley taking second, Keel or third. Berwick taking in fourth place. And in fifth place, we have Williamstown. So that's time final number one. Of two in the under 15 boys, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is our fastest of the two time finals for the under 15 boys. So this is uh, time final number two. Athletes from the inside. Looks like we've got a full field, which is great to see for this age group. In lane one, we have Knox, two, Albury, three, Box Hill, four, Gippsland Country Region, five, Keelor, six, Caulfield, seven, Geelong. And in lane eight, we have Diamond Valley as the heavens open yet again here at Lakeside Stadium is our second or third bout of uh, showers coming through. A little bit of a cross breeze at the moment. Set. So boys off to a great start here in this event. Keep an eye on Gippsland Country Region. They're lane four. These guys come in with a very fast time of 50 seconds and 60, 50.6. And I don't think that's actually correct for some reason because if they were running that time, they essentially would be running a four by one. So might have a, a bit of an error there on that seated time, but that's Start okay. We'll jump in and just see how we make our way through for the rest of these competitors now. 
So having a look here, it does look like we've got a really strong run at the moment by the athletes from Geelong out in lane seven. But Keelor making their way up on the field in lane five also. So it is going to be Geelong. They're going to take the baton first in this one. Keelor, Diamond Valley, Box Hill, Knox, Caulfield, then Albury, I would suggest. GCR team just taking the baton right now as they make their way for their third leg. But at the moment, as we look along the back straight at the moment, it is Geelong out in front. Uh, Keelor in second. Box Hill probably just jumping into third in front of Diamond Valley and Box Hill. But Geelong take it first, then Keelor. Slight adjustment of the baton for the Keelor athlete as he chases down the Geelong athlete. Knox sitting in third. Box Hill, then Diamond Valley. It shouldn't change too much. We might see a minor change between second and third, but I don't quite think so. It is going to be Geelong. They're going to take line on us here. Keelor's going to have to dig deep to hold on to second place by a late finishing Knox for third. Box Hill in fourth. Caulfield, Diamond Valley, Albury. And in eighth place, we have Gippsland Country Region coming across the line. Next event on the track is event 15. This is the girls under 16, 4 by 200 metres. Time final, number one. As the athletes make their way back to the blocks, we'll introduce the field to you from lane three. We have Cranbourne. Lane four, Wodonga. Lane five, Coburg. And in lane six, Warrigal. On your marks. Nice clean start for these athletes here. Fastest seed to qualify for this one comes from lane four, which is Wodonga. They come in at 203.20, so really not a lot of difference between those and the athletes from Coburg in lane five. So I do expect, well, Coburg's running really strongly at the moment, but do suspect that possibly Wodonga may have a athlete moving into this second leg who will put the challenge on for Coburg. So relatively... Um, comparative changes there for all four teams, really. I wouldn't really pick anyone that had a quicker change of the four. They all were quite level, but you can start to see now the athletes from Wodonga in the maroon on the, probably to the right of screen now, moving up over the athlete from Coburg there in lane five. So it is Wodonga. They're going to change first. Coburg in second. Cranbourne just a snidge in front of Warrigal there. But as they make their way around, it is the Wodonga athlete who's going to be open up that lead now. And probably the Cranbourne athlete might move into second just over the Coburg athlete. So Cranbourne running really strong at the moment in second place. Wodonga sitting out in front as we speak and Coburg sitting in third with Warrigal in fourth. So as they come up to the final changes now, it is going to be the athlete from Wodonga changing in first. We'll make sure it's a nice clean change, which it is. Cranbourne really making the most of their changes as well, just to make up any ground that they can over Wodonga. But it is a Wodonga athlete with a beautiful sprinting high-need stride there. She's running around with about 110 metres to go. 
Now, she does, she's running herself a little bit of a longer distance at the moment, so we'd hope to see her move into lane one. Otherwise, the Cranbourne athlete might take full advantage of that and actually sneak in in the final stage of this race. But it is a Wodonga athlete. She's going to hold, hold up to take out first. Cranbourne in second. Warwick will coming home for third. And Coburg in fourth. That's the first of two time finals for the under 16 girls. Next event on the track is our under-16 girls. This is the second time final, so our fastest eight competitors. We do look like we have lane one and lane eight vacant. So our athletes run from lanes two through to seven. In lane two, we have Ringwood. In lane three, we have Gippsland Country Region. In lane four, Mentone. Five, Whittlesea City. Six, Knox. And in lane seven, Diamond Valley. On your marks. Set. Nice clean start for the athletes here in this second time final of the under-16 girls. Keep an eye on Mentone. They are traditionally in that bright yellow top. They come with our fastest qualifying time of 153.66. Just a, a short margin ahead of Whittlesea City uh, and Gippsland Country Region, who you'll see in more the orange and white. So keep an eye on Mentone. You do expect them to one run quite strong, but a lot of it depends on changing as well. So... Mento and Middlesea City, you'd probably pick the two of them to be first and second at the moment, and they were very equal in that change over. Middlesea City might just have the stronger edge in this particular leg of the race, but there are, remember, four legs of a race, so you don't significantly run one, uh, one leg which uh, supersedes the others. So Whittlesea City at the moment out in front, strong running by the athlete in Gippsland Country Region in lane three at the moment also. He's just passed over the shoulder of a Mentone athlete. Striding out in lane eight is the athlete or lane seven, Diamond Valley. Whittlesea City change first, Gippsland Country Region, Mentone, Diamond Valley, Knox and Ringwood it is. So we'll just see as they make their way around. But Whittlesea City at the moment running really strong. They come through as our second fastest qualifier. Expect to Mentone to start moving up on this group just now, probably with their strongest run running the final leg of this race. So let's see how that compares. Good strong run by the Knox athlete as well at the moment. So she's gone from, she's really moved up into edge onto that, to tussle out for that bronze medal place. So probably a little bit of an untidy change for the Mentone athletes there now. But it is Whittlesea City out in front at the moment. They look like they've got this one made at the moment, but strong running by the Gippsland Country Region athlete there sitting in second, but I don't think she's going to quite make it there. We'll see how the tussle goes for the third place as well. There is a bit of a challenge on from Knox over Mentone, but I think they'll hold off. So it's going to be Whittlesea City in first, Gippsland Country Region in second, Mentone third, Knox fourth, Ringwood and Diamond Valley for those minor places around the other way. So Diamond Valley, then Ringwood. 
That's the under 16 girls, four by 200 metre final. Next event on the track is the under-16 boys, 4 by 200 metres. This is time final number one. On your mark. Athletes from the infield, lane four, Melton City, lane five, Ringwood, and in lane seven, Craigieburn. So just the three competitors in this event today. We do have scratchings from lane three and lane six. Set. So a clean start by these boys here. Fastest qualifier out of the three uh, the three teams probably comes from Craigie Boom, which is the um, the team at front of screen right now. So they're in the blue and white. We've got Melton City in the orange and white. They're sitting in second, and Ringwood in the yellow and gold, uh, yellow and green, and a little bit of black they have on their uniform as well. So if that sort of separates the three of them there for you. So a bit of a big stretch for the young man there from Craigie, Craigie Burn to the very tall competitor running the second leg. As they make their way around, very nice clean changing by all three centres in this one. But it is Craigie Burn out in lane seven at the moment, running very strong. They're being chased down by Mountain City. They should almost change very close to each other in this second change. But it is going to be Craigie Burn just in front. or oh, just in front of Melton City. There we go. And Ringwood in third place. So Craigie Burn at the moment running re very strong out there in lane seven. Closely followed by Melton City in lane four and Ringwood in lane five. So they're your three competitors. Just keeping them in shot at the moment as they make their way down the back straight. But it is a Craigie Burn athlete. Holding on to that lead at the moment for about 15, 20 metres as they come into this final change. Melton City taking in the second at the change as well. And Ringwood just coming into that final change now. But it is Craigie Burn strong, running very strong at the moment. About 100 metres to go here for this competitor in the final leg of this event. As he makes his way towards the finish... Congratulations goes to Craigie Byrne taking out this time final number one. Second place will go to Mountain City. And third place to Ringwood. Unofficial time for first is 1.45.63. That's to Craigie Byrne. So congratulations to those three teams of that event.
on your marks. So a little bit of sunshine sneaking through here at Lakeside Stadium amongst the uh, the showers. Um, so just remembering, I believe we are still in summer. Or are we in summer? Yes, we are in summer still. You wouldn't think, but um, people walk around in beanies and jumpers and whatnot and jackets. So um, I think it was the case of rolling out the Katmandu jacket and the Mac packs uh, for this event, dusting them off. Set. So a nice clean start for this second time final, the under-16 boys, four by 200 metres. In lane two, Berwick. In lane three, Kilo B. Four, Caulfield. Five, Kilo. Six, Williamstown. And in lane seven, Nutter Wadding. Strong running by Keelor at the moment, as well as Williamstown out there. Caulfield putting in a hot challenge as well in lane four. But it is going to be our Keelor athletes changing first, just probably almost equally with Williamstown. And then Caulfield, Nutter Wadding as well so as they come through and also our second keel or team so we've got keel or b and a in this race so williamstown running strong at the moment they're coming down into the second change doesn't look like he's slowing down too much so we'll get our first athlete to be on his way now and see how clean this change is so just making that there williamstown keel or caulfield nutter wadding in the second keel or team also We've got our Berwick team really making a late charge there too as well in the third leg of this event. So the athletes make the crossover now. It is still the athlete out from Williamstown leading at the moment. Keelor starting to peg him in. And the second Keelor team currently sitting in third with Caulfield following behind. Williamstown take this one out. Do suspect Caulfield are going to try and chase... Uh, sorry, Keelor are going to chase him down. We've got the athlete from Caulfield just passing over the shoulder of the second Keelor team. But it is going to be Williamstown really trying to hold this one off and take it down to the line. So taking out first in a quick time, 137-13, Kilo A in second, Caulfield, Nutter Wadding late dash in there for fourth place over the Kilo B team. And then we have Berwick. So congratulations to the boys in the under-16s. We do have a straight final of the under-17 girls coming up. And we don't have a 4x2 uh, race for the under-17 boys. So this will be the final 4x200 uh, metre event for our gender uh, races. And then we'll be starting to move into our mixed races very shortly. On your marks. So next event on the track we mentioned before is the under 17 girls, four by 200 metres. So a couple of scratchings in lanes one and two. So no Lee and Gather and Carayo. Set. So clean start for the athletes here from lane three. We have Coburg, four, Berwick, five, Geelong, six, Mentone, seven, Cranbourne. And in lane eight, we have Keelor. Fastest qualifier in this event comes from lane five, which is longer of the teams. However, 
that doesn't necessarily represent the final placings in this ra these races. So um, there's a number of combinations that have to come into this as per baton changes and things like that as well. So Mentone do look like they've got the upper edge of Geelong just at this moment. So as they make their way around, it is going to be Mentone just in front of Geelong. Co uh, Coburg running really strongly there at the moment in lane three, as is the team from Berwick in lane four. But as we come up to the change here, this is the second change. We'll just see how the teams compare for their change. Mentone first, Geelong, Berwick, Co Coburg. And then it looks like Cranbourne and Keelor probably changing very sequentially there in lane seven and eight. So as they make their way around to the final stages of this race, probably looking about 300 metres to go right now. It is going to be Mentone that come into that crossover zone first, followed by Geelong, Coburg and Berwick. So it's going to be those four teams, I would suggest, that are going to contest these medal placings here in this race. Remember, it's a straight final. There's no two-time finals. Mentone, probably not as a cleaner changer as Geelong. Geelong have taken over that lead and running very strongly out in front at the moment. Coburg are chasing in now as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Coburg run them down for second place. Um, that is the team from Mentone. We'll see how they fare. But it is Geelong out in front. They've opened up that lead now. It's going to be a hot tussle for second at the moment. Mentone holding off from Coburg, but it's going to go right down to the line. Geelong will take out first. Mentone hold off for second. Coburg third. Berwick fourth. Cranbourne in fifth and Keelor in sixth place. So that's the final 4 by 200 metre gender race specific. So we'll leave those ones go down now and that's our first block of events down. We are now just about to open up our mixed gender 4 by 200 metre events. So any combination of two boys and two girls in these races so they can run alternate legs. Um, do have in this particular race a number of girls starting. Um, and then we will see their fellow competitors make their way around. So once again, two-time finals of most age groups. And we'll just wait for our starters to prepare the athletes and we'll introduce the field to you. So as mentioned before, we are now up to our mixed gender 4 by 200 metre events. First age group up is under nine, so we have the first of two time finals for this race. In lane one, we have Chelsea, two, Mornington, three, Williamstown, B, four, Knox, five, Ballarat, six, Bacchus Marsh, seven, Collingwood. In lane eight, we have Berry. Set. So off to a great start here. We have our competitors in the under nines, four by 200 metre mixed gender race. So as we go through, we can actually see strong running at the moment by the athletes from Knox and possibly Ballarat there in the centre of field at the moment. It is a long way for a little, uh, little eight-year-old's legs at the moment, but they're making their way around. And we'll see how clear their baton changes go and how well their practice has actually done them. So moving into this first change, it does look like we might have Williamstown changing first there. Bacchus Marsh, Caulfield, Collingwood, Berwick there in shot. Can't see much more of what's behind them there in the inside lanes, but as they move around from the stagger, we'll see how they fare. Young ladies in lanes eight, seven and six running very strongly at the moment, being chased down by... Young man in lane three from Williamstown. That's the B team for Williamstown. He participates for. But coming into the final stages, the little Bacchus Marsh young lady is not going to give up just yet. She's going to come into this final or the second last change here. So nice clean change by Williamstown. Caulfield might just sneak that second, third Bacchus Marsh, Collingwood, Knox, Berwick, Mornington and Chelsea. So Williamstown running a very strong race at the moment. 
They don't necessarily come in with a fastest seated time, but they've had some good baton changes at the moment, which are really playing off to their advantage. They're going to come into the crossover zone now. So most of the competitors... Ballarat there in second. It's the one that always trips me up there. So it is Williamstown at the moment. Then Ballarat, Collingwood, Berwick, Bacchus Marsh, Mornington. So it's a really hotly contested race, this one here. Berwick coming home with the goods right now. Really strong finish by this young man. He's going to come across the line in first. Ballarat in second, Williamstown, Collingwood, Bacchus Marsh, Mornington, Knox and Chelsea. They're your competitors in the first of two time finals for the under nine athletes. So on the track, we have the second of two time finals for the under nine athletes in the four by 200 meter mixed event. In lane one, welcoming Surf Coast to their first relay event of uh, their centers, I guess what you would call uh, creation. So welcome to Surf Coast. In lane two, Moorabbin. Lane three, Doncaster. Lane four, Wodonga. Lane five, Caulfield. Lane six, Keelor. Lane seven, Albury, and in lane eight, we have Diamond Valley. On your marks. Set. So nice clean start for the athletes here in this second of two time finals for the under nine athletes. So running strong at the moment, we do see the athletes from Caulfield in lane five. They're running off to a great start at the moment. They do come through with a very quick, faster seated time, almost three seconds faster than their fellow competitors. Surf Coast also running very strong in lane one at the moment too. As they make their way into that first change box, we'll see how we go. So keep an eye on the athletes from Caulfield they're going to change first just in front of the athletes in Diamond Valley out in lane eight. Surf Coast 2 are running very strongly at the moment on the inside lane, but being chased down by Moorabbin and Doncaster in lanes two and three. But it is Diamond Valley and Caulfield running very strongly at the moment. Diamond Valley are in lane eight, so there is a little bit of a difference between those and lane five. You would suspect that lane five may change the baton just first, but it's going to be very close. So Diamond Valley just have that first over. Surf Coast probably changed third there, so good running by those young people there. Doncaster running strongly also at the moment, as is Moorabbin in lane two. So at the moment, Diamond Valley, Caulfield, Surf Coast, Doncaster, Moorabbin. The athlete from Moorabbin had a little bit of a kick there, so she's running really well at the moment. So keeping the eye on the stagger as they cut across. A little bit of tired legs there for the Diamond Valley athlete, but they're making their way into the final stages of this race. Strong running by the athlete there. We said from Moorabbin as well before, she's run a really strong 200 metres there. So she's going to pass to her fellow competitor there. And it does look like those three should, should remain as your place getters potentially in this event. Caulfield with a strong finish at the moment, just passing through on an inside prime opportunity when there's a big gap there by the Diamond Valley athlete to make his way through. So at the moment, it's Caulfield, Diamond Valley, Moorabbin, Doncaster. I think it might have been Albury just passed on the shoulder of Doncaster there. We'll wait and see. Surf Coast and also Keelor. But it is Caulfield here. They've run really strong in that final change. They're going to take this one out in first. Diamond Valley take out second. Moorabbin in third. Doncaster. Late finish by Keel or just to snip the athlete there by Moorabbin. Then Wodonga and Surf Coast. So they're your final competitors of the under nines.
4 by 200 metres mixed gender event. Now. Okay, as we move on now to the sec the first of two time finals for the under 10 athletes. So this is a on mixed gender event. And we'll introduce the athletes to you in just a moment. Set. And off to a nice clean start. The athletes from lane one, Berwick in two, Collingwood, three, Wangaratta, four, South Melbourne District, five, Knox B, six, Ballarat, seven, Surf Coast. And in lane eight, we have Ringwood B. So running strongly at the moment is the athletes from Wangaratta out in lane three. They're running a really strong race at the moment. Those two in the South Melbourne are running probably the best and they should come into that change first, but it is going to be the athletes. Yeah, Wangaratta are going to take that first. South Melbourne, then Ballarat it might be as well. And you can see Ringwood out there on the outside. But it is the athlete from Wangaratta running very strongly against her male compatriots in that, this race. She's going to try and hold on to that, but it is strong running by the Ballarat athlete there in lane six. So as they make their way to the final 100 metres of this, le the leg of this race, you can see the Knox athlete starting to dig a little bit deeper now to make his move up onto the Ballarat athlete on his outside. So it's going to be between Knox and Ballarat, possibly even Wodonga for this baton change. Wodonga, Knox, Ballarat, that's the three it goes. South Melbourne, Ringwood, and also Berwick might be a little bit more ahead, in that, in, ahead of that mix as well. So running strongly at the moment does look like pretty much an all-female contingency besides one competitor or two competitors in this leg of the race. So remembering there's no such order for a mixed gender race to run. It can be any order of four, but it has to be two boys and two girls. So... We can see now the athlete from Wangaratta. She's going to pass into a male competitor, I would imagine. We've only seen one so far. As is the athlete also from, I believe, Knox. So it is both male competitors here running this final leg for these teams, I think, as we make their way around. But it is going to be the Knox competitor going to take over the shoulder of Wangaratta just slightly here in the final stages of this race. So 100 metres to go. It does look like Knox, Wangaratta, and I think Berwick in third. We'll see uh, South Melbourne District, Ballarat, then I believe Ringwood it might be. So it is Knox coming down to the line. This is your Knox B team running very strongly. They're going to take out first. Berwick are going to sneak home for second just in front of Wangaratta. South Melbourne District, Ringwood crossing the line in front of Ballarat. Collingwood. And Surf Coast taking up that first time final of the under 10 athletes. Next event on the track is the second of two time finals for the under 10 mixed 4x200 metres. On your marks. Set. The athletes from the inside, we have Warnable in lane one, two Yarra Rangers, three Knox, four Keelor, five Ringwood, six Mentone, seven Mornington. In lane eight, we have Campbell Mulvin. Fastest qualifier in this event comes from Knox, so do expect them to run a really strong race. They're quite 
a few seconds faster than the rest of their competitors based on the seeded times from their regional event. So we'll see how they go with this baton change, but it does look like Keelor might be the ones to change the baton first at that first change box. Then Knox and Keelor also, sorry, Knox was, might be Ringwood actually even. Um, we've got Mentone in that mix as well. And on the outside, we've got Mornington running very strongly there in the all black tights. So we've got Mornington, Ringwood, Keelor, Knox, Cowboy Mulvin, Mentone, Geelong and Warnable there in amongst that mix. So really strong running here by the athlete from Mornington out there on the outside. They might change first in actual fact, then Knox, Ringwood, Keelor, Mentone, Yarra Rangers and Warnable. So as they make their way around with about 300 metres to go, it is Knox out in front at the moment. Marginally in front by Mornington, Ringwood and Keelor. They're the four to keep an eye on for now, unless anything significantly changes at this changeover box. You've got your second group of four teams in the back part of the field, which include Warnable, Mentone, Campbell or Mulvin, as well but as they make their way around for these final stages we've got some really hot contested athletes running these final leg mornington knox and ringwood on the coming just through the middle there at as we speak so mornington probably running a little bit extra distance there but he's made his mind up to move on the inside now but as they make their way down it's going to be knox and ringwood leg for leg at the moment they would have run this at regions together knox are going to stride at home really strong running by this young young man he's going to come across the line in first ringwood in second mornington take out third mentone keel lord yarra rangers campbell Mulvin, and warnable they're your competitors in the second time final of the under 10s mixed four, four by 200 meters The next event on the track is the first of two under on 11's time finals for the four by 200 metres. So we are just working on getting some graphics up for you. Um, we did have a comment come through, which we appreciate and respect. Um, the Just to number the time finals in the screen graphics, you can see where it's got your event 21. Shit. So we're just working on that now, just um, attempting to fix that. But whilst we do uh, work on that one for you, we're going to introduce the field from lane one. We have Keel or B to Ballarat. Three Doncaster, four Geelong, five Albury, six Williamstown, seven Gisborne, and in lane eight we have Diamond Valley. Nice strong running at the moment by Gisborne out there in lane seven. They've just passed over the shoulder of their Diamond Valley athletes in lane eight. But also moving strongly through the middle of the field is Geelong and Albury in lanes four and five respectfully. So as they make their way to this first change, Gisborne are going to have to really stretch to make that change. They've just made it there, but it was also actually a really strong change by the Williamstown and Albury team there in five and six. As we make our way around to the second 100 metres of the second leg of the event, it is Gisborne currently running very strongly out in front right now. Diamond Valley really trying to stride in and catch up into this second change, as is the athletes from Geelong in lane five. So... Gisborne take that one first, Williamstown, Geelong, or probably Geelong there, Williamstown, Diamond Valley, Coburg, uh, sorry, Keelor, Doncaster, and Ballarat. But it is strong running at the moment by the athletes from Geelong. In the centre of shot, 
They'll come to this breakover line here. And they'll cross through into the inside lanes. Williamstown currently still sitting in second. Gisborne in third. Strangely enough, ladies and gentlemen, those three teams come from the same region. So you could imagine how hotly contested that race was at their previous round prior to today. So Geelong change first. Then we've got Williamstown. Then Gisborne. Diamond Valley on the outside of Keelor. Williamstown just taken over... Geelong just now with Gisborne shortly just after. But we haven't seen this yet, ladies and gentlemen. Three teams from the same region coming through in the final stages of a race so strongly. But it's a really great run. So Williamstown are going to take this one out first. Young lady from Gisborne is just going to pit the young man from Geelong on the line. Diamond Valley, Doncaster, Ballarat. Albury and Keelor in those minor places. So that's the first of two time finals for the under 11s. We'll be coming up with our first or second time final of the under 11s in just a short moment. So next event on the track is our under 11s mixed four by two. This is time final number two. So your eight fastest qualifiers from the regional rounds. And we'll introduce the athletes to you from lane one. We have Bendigo, lane two, Box Hill, lane three, Berwick, lane four, Melton City, lane five, Keelor, lane six, Caulfield, lane seven, Campbell Melbourne, and in lane eight, we have Nutter Wadding. On your marks. So clean start for this second time final of the under 11 athletes in the mixed 4x200 metres. So really great running there by the athletes. It does look like Berwick running strongly at the moment, as is the athletes from Keelor also with those long pink socks. Very prominent feature here at Athletics when you get your TXU socks on with uh, the bright and vibrant colours. So if you wear them, you're going to get a mention. That's absolutely for sure. So going to that change now, we do see Keelor possibly changing first, but also Berwick on the inside, which is far right of screen that you can see running really strongly right now. So Keelor and Berwick probably picking the mix at the moment. Don't forget the athletes there in Caulfield in lane six as well, also running very strong. But it is the Keelor athlete, probably pick of the bunch right now, who's running very strongly into this, into this second change. So making their way into this change, it's going to be Keelor athlete, Changing first, they're probably actually going to be second just behind Berwick. Berwick probably changed nice and cleanly there, a little bit more than Keelor. Caulfield, third, Nutter Wadding, Box Hill, Campbell, Malvern, Melton City and Bendigo in amongst that mix as well. So as they make their way to the cones to cross over into the inside lanes, it is going to be the athlete from Berwick starting to take over the lead from Keelor. 
The two female competitors will pass into males on this last leg, I'm quite sure. So as we see them come through, yes, Berwick, then Keelor, it is going to be. Let's see how these two go in the final stages of this 4x200 metre event with 150 metres to go. So it is Berwick, as we mentioned before, then Keelor. We'll get a bit of vision in just a moment as we come around. I think it might be Caulfield in third, then Box Hill in fourth. Tiring a little bit is our Berwick athlete. Keelor's digging deep to try and snatch that first place from him. But he's not going to be able to quite make it. Berwick are going to take this one out in first. Keelor second, Caulfield in third. Box Hill, nice strong run in fourth. Nutter Wadding, Campbell Mulvin. Bendigo just sneaking home for seventh over Mountain City in eighth place. So there your competitors in the under 11, mixed four by 200 metres, time final number two. Next event on the track is the first of two time finals in the under 12s, mixed four by two. The athletes from the inside, we have Aubrey in lane one, two, Melton City, three, South Melbourne District, four, Caulfield, five, Williamstown, six, Ballarat, seven, Camberwell, Malvern B, and eight, Whittlesea City B. You done with this? On your marks. Straight. Stand up, back to the cone. So a little bit of unsteadiness. We haven't seen warning. too much of it today, so we've been very lucky in that in that uh, aspect to try and get these races um, start and finish nice and quickly. On your marks. So we'll just have the athletes reset and hopefully offer a nice clean start this time. Lane two, one steady. Lane seven, break. First and final warning. On your marks. Set. Stand up.
So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just, uh, we're just on a bit of a wait here at the second. It um, does look like there may be a team that's been disqualified from this event. So, um, just protocol is to make sure the team manager is made aware and that we can then resume the race very shortly. So, um, one of those unfortunate situations, but um, one of those, yeah, I guess... Uh, We'll just wait for the starters to prepare the athletes once again and we'll be back with you very, very shortly. We'll reintroduce the field to you um, once that has taken place. Okay, so it does look like we do have possibly sometimes we call it a race running under protest, but um, without uh, knowing what the outcome was, um, we're giving the opportunity for the athletes to have all have a run, which is the most positive outcome you can have. So this is heat one of two, or time final one of two in the four by two hundred meters, the under twelves. Set. So a nice clean start this time here for the athletes in the mixed under 12s, 4 by 200 metres. So the athletes make their way around the track. Very good running at the moment by the athletes from Ballarat in lane 6 and also the competitors in lane 5 from Williamstown. So make their way into the first change box. It is Williamstown probably with a bit of an upper edge on their fellow competitors. They do probably come in with one of the two or third fastest seated time. So as they make their way to that change... We'll see how they go. They're actually really running very strongly at the moment as well. So as is the athletes on the inside from Mountain City and also from South Melbourne District. But it is Williamstown at the moment running a really strong leg here in this under 11s, four by two, under 12, 4 by 200 metres. So as we make their way through, strong running by the athlete also from Ballarat out in lane six as well. The two, Williamstown and Ballarat, are going to probably change quite closely together. We'll see who has the cleanest change of the two. Does look like Williamstown, very good change, as is Ballarat, Caulfield, Melton City. Then we might have Campbell, Melbourne, Whittlesea City and South Melbourne also. As they make their way down the back straight to the crossover line, it is Williamstown very closely being followed by the athletes from Ballarat. Do believe Ballarat might get to this change box first, but we'll see how they go. He's really stretching out the Ballarat athlete, making every effort of his leg of this race. So he does, yet yeah, just slightly misses that change. Williamstown might have got the cleaner change of the two as they make their way round to the final straight of this event. It does look like Ballarat may just pass over the shoulder of the Williamstown athlete as they make their way through with 100 metres to go. Caulfield currently sitting in third. Melton City, Whittlesea City is just shortly following behind. But it is Ballarat, really strong finishing here by these athletes. They're going to take out the first of two time finals for the under 12s, mixed four by 200 metres. Williamstown will be second, Caulfield in third. Melton City in fourth, Whittlesea City, Albury, 
Campbell Mulvin, and I'm not sure if you captured this one just before. We did have a bit of a stumble here by the South Melbourne District athlete. So a really great effort for him to get back up and make his way across the line for his team. So that's the first of two time finals for the under 12s, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is the under 12, time final number two, four by 200 metres. In lane one, we have Box Hill, two, Whittlesea City, three, Waverley, four, Diamond Valley, five, Knox, six, Berwick, seven, Doncaster, and in lane eight, we have Campbell Mulvin. Eight starters, and these are the eight fastest qualifiers from the region qualifying round. On your marks. Set. And nice clean start this time in the second of two time finals for the under 12s. Four by 200 metres. So running very strongly at the moment, the athlete's centre of field at the moment in shot, you can actually see, I believe, would be Knox. Now, Knox are running incredibly well. They are one of our fastest qualifiers. Uh, very closely after Diamond Valley, which is like a 0.20 or 0 0.20 um, time difference between their regional rounds. So Knox do change first, just in front of Doncaster. Diamond Valley also in that mix as well. Waverley running very strong at the moment on the inside now. They are from lane three. So keep an eye on them as they make their way around. But it is your athletes in from Knox running very strongly right now. Diamond Valley are going to be their most fierce competitors in this event. And the athlete from Diamond Valley is not disappointing at all at the moment as well as she runs up into this change box just slightly ahead of Knox. Diamond Valley, then Knox are going to change Waverley, Whittlesea City, Berwick, Doncaster, Campbell, Mulvin, and Box Hill on the inside. That's the order of the changes. Let's see how that differs when they come around into the final stages of this race. Diamond Valley still out in front at the moment now, just in front of Knox. So they're running really strongly right now as they make their way up into their athletes jumping and waving about for the final change. So it's going to be Diamond Valley and Knox changing almost sequentially as they make their way around with 200 metres to go. Knox on the outside seem to have a bit of an upper hand at the moment. We'll see if Diamond Valley's got a kick left in the final stages of this race. It does seem these shoes are very prominent at the moment. They might be the most popular ones we've seen at our state track and field events. But it is Knox, Diamond Valley. Knox and Diamond Valley taking this one down to the line. Knox are going to look like they're going to hold off. But great efforts to Diamond Valley also. Knox in first, Diamond Valley in second. 153-34. Waverley takes out third. Whittlesea City in fourth. Doncaster fifth. Campbell, Mulvin, Berwick and Box Hill. So great running by all of those teams in the second time final of the under 12s. On your marks. Stand up, back to the cone.
on your marks. Next event on the track is the first of two time finals for the under 13 mixed 4x200 metres. In lane one, we have Sale, two, Ballarat, three, Geelong B, four, Wangaratta, five, Achuka Moama, six, Box Hill, seven, Craigie Burn, and in lane eight, we have Oakley. So eight starters, nice clean start for these athletes. Chuka Moama had a really good start there. They come through with our fastest qualifying time of 157.47 for this event. So a big shout out to Chuka Moama. It would have been a nice early start for them also. Um, Wangaratta too, a bit of a travel. Um, but many competitors, uh, even Ballarat, there's actually a number of more regional centres who we always welcome and thank for making their way to this event. So first change box, a little bit fairly even at actually at the moment. Box Hill probably had one of the best changes there. Chukamoama as well as Wangaratta and Oakley we can see in shot. There are a couple of teams just to the far right of shot that will come into vision just now. So that being Sale at the moment and also... Core Ballarat and Geelong it is. So at the moment, the two teams on sh uh, screen to the far right, Craigie Burn and Box Hill, tussling this one out for this change box. Wangaratta running really strong at the moment as well. But it is going to be Wangaratta, Box Hill, Craigie Burn. Chuka Moama have lost their baton, but they'll pick that up. Sale running really strong on the inside as well at the moment. They've really snuck up on that. Oakley, Ballarat and Geelong as well coming through. But as they make their way towards the break line, it is the athletes from Box Hill out in front, Craigie Byrne and Wangaratta in those in that order. So just trying to just stretch out that lead, Box Hill. It's going to be quite even by the time they get there. Wangaratta making the most of that space as well as they come into the final change. So Wangaratta, Box Hill and Craigie Byrne there. Running very strongly at the moment. Box Hill just out in front of Wangaratta, but you do expect that Wangaratta athlete to possibly jump on the outside. Always never a great idea to pass on a bend, so he's going to wait to the straight to take his opportunity to peg back the athlete from Box Hill. So as he makes his way down, it is still Box Hill running very strongly at the moment. Wangaratta are going to come through to take out second. Craig Burn are going to hold off with a very strong run for third. Fourth place, the longer legs of the Echuca Moama athlete will just pipe on the, the athlete from Sale. Oakley, Ballarat, and then Geelong just coming across the line for eighth place. So congratulations to those competitors in the first of two timed finals for the under-13s mixed 4 by 200 metres. So next event on the track is the second of two time finals for the under 13s, four by 200 metres. So your top eight competitors from the regional round on screen. So nice clean start for these athletes here. In lane one, we have Doncaster, two Melton City, three Essendon, four Keelor, five Collingwood, six Geelong, seven Caulfield. And in lane eight, we have Whittlesey City. So a number of teams here. Essendon probably look at a bit of a standout in this particular race. So we'll just see how they fare as they make their way. The athlete from Essendon is in lane three and she's moving up really well at the moment along the back straight, changing into her first competitor. They do seem to take the baton first, possibly then Geelong and even Caulfield out there on the outside as well. Keel are running very strongly at the moment. Two in the centre of field, but it is Whittlesea City out on lane eight at the moment. Really running 
quite strongly against her fellow competitors in this second leg of this event. So as we make it to the change block, it is going to be Whittlesea City possibly taking the baton first. Essendon, Keelor, very close in that mix. Those three centres would have run together at their regional round. Geelong look like they've lost the baton. Caulfield just a bit ahead of them uh, in changing. Melton City, then Doncaster. So as we make our way around, it is Essendon, as we mentioned before, that would have been the hot favourite in this particular time final, which is the final time final for this age group. Keelor sitting in second. Melton City running really strongly at the moment in third place. Now, Melton City doesn't come through one of the fastest qualifiers, but we've run a really strong race now at the moment to sit where they are. Caulfield, you'd expect possibly to pop up into that mix as well at some point. But it is Essendon off with a really strong lead at the moment. They've probably got a equal, probably about a 30-metre lead in front of Keelor. But running two at the moment strong is the athletes from Caulfield sitting in third. But it is Essendon. They're going to take this one across the line first. Then we've got Keelor in second. Caulfield holding on to third. Diamond Valley, Geelong, Melton City, Collingwood then possibly Doncaster between the two. That's the second time final of the under-13s, four by 200 metres. Next event on the track is the under 14s mixed four by 200 metres. So it does look like we have eight starters. On your and marks. from the inside, we have in lane one Coburg, two Horsham, three Waverley, four Essendon, five Keel or B, six Warrigal, seven Doncaster, and in lane eight, we have Yarra Rangers. So clean start for this first of two under 14s, four by 200 metre mixed time finals. Make their way around. Waverley running very strongly at the moment in lane three. They've moved up on their fellow competitors of four and five as they move into this change box for the first time. Warrigal also running very strongly right now as well. As we move into this first change box, we'll see if we can actually take some vision. Waverley do change first. Possibly Warrigal second, Doncaster, Essendon, and Yarra Rangers there also. So as we move around, it is strong running. Waverley still holding off out in front at the moment. Strong running by Warrigal two in lane six and also Yarra Rangers in lane eight. So as they make their way into this second change box, Warrigal... Might be just in front of, but we'll see. Warrigal changes first, then Waverley, Yarra Rangers, Doncaster, Keelor, Horsham, Essendon and Coburg. But it is Waverley still holding off in front at the moment. They're going to move into this late last change with a little bit of an advantage to their fellow competitors. Warrigal still holding on to second, but Yarra Rangers making a bit of a late charge here in third place to make this change quite even into the final leg of this event. So a little bit of a stop there for the Yarra Rangers athlete, but she's going to chase down her fellow competitor from Warrigal there. Those two in second and third are really going to tussle this out towards the finish line. But the athlete in lane one from Waverley running beautifully at the moment. They've run very strongly from the start, convincingly to the finish. Waverley are going to take this one out in first place. In an unofficial time of 152.89, Yarra Rangers holds off for second, Warrigal third, Coburg, Horsham, 
Keelor, Essendon and Doncaster. That's the first of two time finals for the under 14s, four by 200 metres. So next event on the track is our final time final for the under 14s, mixed 4 by 200 metres. And we will introduce the athletes to you from lane 1, Berwick, 2, Collingwood, 3, Western Metro Region, 4, Camberwell, Malvern, 5, Keelor, 6, Box Hill, 7, Geelong, and in lane 8 we have Knox. On your marks. Set. So clean start for these athletes here in this second time final of the under 14s. So nice even race at this stage. Probably the athletes on the inside of the field from Western Metro region and also possibly we'll just see who, as they come into the change. Collingwood running very well at the moment. So make their way around. It is the athletes from Geelong out in front possibly at the moment, out in lane eight, in lane seven, my apologies. And also running very well at the moment is the athletes from Keel or in lane five. But Geelong and Knox, it is seven and eight that are running strongly. Keel or making their way up on the group as well is Box Hill there also who are in lane six. So changing first, probably Geelong, just over Keel or then Box Hill as well as Knox. Collingwood running very strong, as are the WMR team as well. The athlete in Werribee being represented for that Western Metro team. Campbell, Mulvin, and then Berwick it is. So just coming around to the crossover zone, we've got our lady competitors here for the Box Hill Geelong team, as well as our, second, uh, as our Western Metro team as well. So Knox also running very strongly here. So... As they make their way around, it is going to be the athletes between Keelor and Box Hill running very strongly at the moment. So the athlete from Keelor probably do know that his capabilities are very strong in sprinting. But he's going to be really struggling to catch up to the Box Hill athlete right now who seems to be breaking away. So it is going to be Box Hill taking this one out first. Keelor in second. Campbell or Melbourne, great finish for third. Knox, Western Metro, or Geelong it might have actually been, my apologies. Collingwood, Western Metro, and then Berwick. So they're your competitors in the under 14 mixed 4x200 four metres final.
Next event on the track is the first of two time finals for the under 15 on mixed your mark. 4 by 200 metres. In lane three, we have Keel or B. In lane four, Diamond Valley B. In lane five, Shepparton. And in lane six, Wodonga. Set. Nice clean start for the four competitors in this event from the inside Keelor, Diamond Valley, Shepparton and Wodonga. Very even running at the moment by our competitors. Not much margin has changed between the four of them. Possibly the Shepparton athlete may be running a tiny bit stronger, but we'll see how this baton change goes just to separate the three of them um, possibly as they move into the second leg. So keep an eye on the changes, how clean they are. It looks like it might have been Wodonga that got the clean change there over Shepparton and Diamond Valley. Keelor should come into vision in just a moment, but they are. there is a little bit of a break between the four competitors. Wodonga running very strongly at the moment. Diamond Valley also running strong in this second leg. So Wodonga's going to have to really dig deep here to actually get a bit of a head start into the final stages of this race. It looks like they've had... The male running in the final leg as well, which will be really convenient for them. So Wodonga, then Diamond Valley, Keelor and Shepparton in that order. So Wodonga still out in front at the moment. Diamond Valley making some significant ground on them. You do expect Diamond Valley to catch up to the athlete by the crossover zone, which pretty much as we speak has happened. Diamond Valley moves into first place. Wodonga sitting in, in second. But I do believe we might have a Diamond Valley female competitor. No, it's a male competitor running last. So strong running by them. So they should open this up this lead a little bit more as well. So Wodonga moves into second place, still holding on. Shepparton and Keelor look like they might battle out for third place as they make their way around into the final stages of this event. But it is Diamond Valley really running strong. Hopefully Wodonga will move into the inside lane so they're not running as further, much further distance than they need to. So Diamond Valley's going to come across the line in first. Wodonga moves into the inside lanes now. They'll take out second. Strong finish by Keelor in third. And Shepparton finishing up, taking out fourth. They're your competitors in the first to two time finals for the under 15s, four by 200 metre mixed event. On your marks. So this is the second of two time finals in the under 15s, four by 200 metres. We'll let the athletes commence and then we'll introduce the field to you. Stand up, back to your cones. So introducing the competitors to you now, from the inside we have Western Country Region in lane one, two Berwick, three Geelong, four Waverley, five Diamond Valley, six Keelor, seven Caulfield and in lane eight we have Gippsland Country Region. So probably for um, convenience we'll probably refer to Western Country Region as WCR and then GCR for Gippsland Country Region for those that are watching. Becomes a little bit of a mouthful to twist around when you're trying to call out eight, eight teams. So we'll... Uh, see how we go with this one. So 
So just a reminder, on after your event 28, which is the Mixed Under 17 event, we will be taking a lunch break. We will be ending our morning streams for both YouTube and Facebook and then recommencing with the second group of events. Set. Stand up. Back to your cones. Lane one, unsteady. On your so mark. Just to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that second group of events is scheduled to commence at 12.30. So we'll probably open the stream back up at about 12.40 or so um, to give you opportunity to settle in for that next race um, in the second session at 12.30. Those races will be the 4x1s in um, general gender and then Set. mixed and then medley events. <laughs> So clean start this time again. This is the under 15s, 4 by 200 metre, time final number two. From the inside, WCR, Berwick, Geelong, Waverley, Diamond Valley, Keelor, Caulfield and GCR. So strong running by our competitors in the in middle of field at the moment. That's the Waverley competitors as well. We did see them earlier in some of the uh, single gender events as well. So... Waverley look like they might jump. Oh, might be actually Diamond Valley might have changed first there, just over Waverley. So we'll see how they go. Ballarat, Keelor, and then on the outside we have GCR as well. So we'll see how the stagger comes in, and then we'll see how the the uh, the teams from the inside of the field also join the group. But it is Waverley running really strong at the moment here, just winding it up into the third leg of this event. So Waverley, Diamond Valley. Keelor, Caulfield, Geelong, GCR, West, sorry, WCR, GCR, and Berwick. So making way down the back straight, it is really strong running by Diamond Valley at the moment. Their crowd support in front of us is really going off. So we'll see as they go into this final change. Diamond Valley take the baton first, just over in front of Waverley. Third place is going to be nice and tight. We'll just see who those teams are, but I think it's a, a combination of Keelor, Berwick possibly, and Caulfield. It might be actually Caulfield, my apologies there, and Geelong in that second in that second group. But Diamond Valley streaking ahead right now at the moment. They come in with a seated time of 1.45. They look like they're going to clean that up nice and well. 1.42.66, taking out first. Keelor are going to streak home for second place. Waverley in third, Geelong, Caulfield. GCR and WCR. And just the one competitor come in, Berwick. And Berwick just making their way across the line now. That's his second of two time finals for the under 15s, four by 200 metre mixed. On your marks. Next event on the track is the first of two time finals for the under 16 mixed 4 by 200 metres. Set. <laughs> Introducing the field to you from lane three, we have Werribee, we have Caulfield in four. Five is Sale, six is Cranbourne, and seven is Craigieburn. 
Off to a great start at the moment is the athletes from Caulfield. You can see them running very strongly at the moment in lane four in shot. As we move into the first change box at the moment, we've got one competitor just at the back of the screen at the moment that you'll see come into vision very shortly. So it does look like Caulfield will change first, then Craigie Burns sail. We Werry and Whittlesea City, that's the order there. So as they make their way around to the final stages of this race or halfway point it is. So it is the athletes from Caulfield running very strongly at the moment. They're going to come down in first place to this second change over. So Caulfield, then Sale. Werribee and Craigieburn a piece very closely. Werribee might have just had the upper hand over Craigieburn. And then we have Cranburn also. So as the competitors make their way, it's a really significant lead out there in front for Caulfield. So Caulfield are running really strongly at the moment. They're going to go into the final change with a very significant lead over the rest of their competitors. So Caulfield started out in lane four. They're going to make their way round and finish off this very strongly. Probably almost about 100 metres in front of their fellow competitors, just shy of. We'll see how it finishes up and if they can keep and stretch out that lead. But it is the competitor from Caulfield. They're going to be chasing the clock. We don't know what happened at region, but they are obviously very fast competitors. This could move them up into the top eight. Let's just wait and see, and we'll have a bit of a look at results hub at the end. Sale finishing off very strong. We're be closely followed by behind, but strong running by this Sale athlete. She's not going to be able to quite hold off the longer legs of the Werribee male running on her outside. He's going to come across the line in second. Sale in third. Craigie Byrne in fourth and Cranburn in fifth. They're the competitors in the first of two time finals for the under 16s 4x200 metres. Next event on the track is the second of two time finals for the under 16s, 4 by 200 metres. On your mark. In lane three, we have Knox, four, Melton City, five, Williamstown, six, Craigieburn, seven, Bacchus Marsh, and in lane eight, we have Ringwood. Nice clean start for the athletes here in this second time final of the under 16s. Fastest qualifier in this event comes from lane five, which is Williamstown. So do expect them to run very strongly. But on their outside at the moment, Craigieburn have got to run a really strong leg in this particular race. So Craigieburn, you would expect that they're going to get to that change box first. Knox stretching out and striding out also on the inside that are running very strongly. But as mentioned before, Craigieburn are going to change first. Then we had Knox. Williamstown, Bacchus Marsh, Ringwood in that mix as well. So as we make our way uh, towards the second half of this second leg, we'll see the athlete from Craigieburn running strongly out in front. Ringwood making their move on the outside. Williamstown slowly edging through in the inside at the moment as well. So it is Ringwood at the moment running very strongly. Williamstown, as mentioned before, starting to move through. 
Had the girls run the first two legs, I believe. So the two boys are going to finish this one up. So Williamstown chasing now. Ringwood on the outside. Knox on the inside too, running very well. But it is Williamstown starting to make ground over the athlete on the outside as well. So Williamstown nice and clean at the moment. Probably opened up and stretched out that lead to about 20 metres or 10, 15 metres or so. We'll see as they come down into this change box now. They're going to take the baton first very convincingly. Then we have Nam, Ring, we have Ringwood and Knox as well in that order. So Williamstown really making their way around to the final stages here. Let's watch the clock on this one here. They ran a 147.15 at their regional round. The record for this event is 138. They're not going to quite get that at the time has passed. Let's see if they can better their time from the regional round. Coming across the line, 147.73, just shy off the regional round time. Knox will come in second, Ringwood in third. Melton City are just going to hold off for fourth over Craigie Burn. Very strong finish by both teams. And Melton City taking up the minor place. So that's the second time final of the under-16s. Next event and final event before the lunch break we have is the under-17. Well, it's actually not the final event before there. We do have one final event after that, which is our multi-class 4 by 200 metres. But we do have now our under-17 4 by 200 metre event up on the track. So just the one race for this age group. And a full field. on your marks. So as I mentioned before, it was the under 17, four by 200 meter mixed final on the track. In lane two, we have Altona, three Geelong, four Berwick, five Keelor, six Whittlesea City, seven Carayo A, and in eight Carayo B. Set. Great start there by the athletes here in this under 17 4 by 200 metre final. Really strong running by the athlete from Geelong in lane two. Sporting those red shoes and the very cool mullet. He's going to be passing really almost all of his competitors over on the back straight, moving into this first change box. As he makes his way there, he's going to change first into his fellow competitor. A little bit of a wobbly change, but that's okay. They got it there in the end. Whittlesea City changed second. Then we had, looks like one of the Carayo teams as well, but also running very strongly at the moment. On the inside is Berwick as well. They're coming from lane four. So we'll see how they make their way. Geelong still in front at the moment. Whittlesea City charging ahead in the later stages of this second leg. Carayo also finishing strong as part of this race leg. Whittlesea City are gonna take it first, Geelong. Carayo, Berwick, Keelor, Carayo B, and then Altona. So really ro really strong changes there in the outside lanes of the competitors in that second to third leg of this event. But at the moment, it's going to be evening up a little bit here. We've got Whittlesea City and Geelong really closing in on this final change. But don't deny the athletes there from Berwick as well. They're actually going to move up into this gap and possibly take them quite by surprise. So Whittlesea City change first, Geelong and Berwick. That ever such urge to cross over and um, pass somebody on the bend is there for the Berwick athlete. Hopefully it doesn't deny him at the end of the finish, but he's running very strongly at the moment. Geelong chasing, Whittlesea City trying to hold off. But it is going to be Berwick. They're going to take it down to the line. The tactics worked well. He's going to take it across the line in first, Geelong in second, Whittlesea City third, Carayo fourth, Keelor. 
then Carayo B and o Altona. That is the under 17, four by 200 meter event. Next event on the track is our final event before the lunch break. That is the mixed four by 200 meters for our multi-class under 13 to 17 athletes. Uh, we have two teams presenting in this event and we'll be able to introduce them very shortly for you. As mentioned before on the track, we have our multi-class event here for the 4x200 metres. This is a mixed race. <coughs> and we've got our teams from EMR in lane three and Gippsland Country Region in lane four. So just determining who our competitor is from Gippsland Country Region. But I know that's Tom from Q representing EMR in lane three. So as they make their way around, this is a 200 metre event, uh, or 4 by 200 metre event for these athletes. So both teams are running very evenly at the moment along the back straight. So they've just passed through their first 100 metres with about 70 metres to go before they change, their bat change the baton to their fellow competitors. So Tom's just a little bit in front at the moment, but both athletes running very strongly. So just for those watching, obviously the multi-class event does work on um, classification and there's a percentage of the total time. So there we go. Nice clean change there for EMR. So we'll just... Let the athletes make their way around. Strong running by the GCR team at the moment. EMR is running very strongly around on the bend too. So as they make their way around, and as I was talking before, the classification works on a percentage. So once the athletes complete the race, it's basically a percentage of the total um, time that, that is calculated. So whilst they may come first in physical format on the race depending on the athletes classifications so each four athletes can determine what the final result might be so we'll just see how we go now Gippsland country region running strongly now out in lane four nice clean baton change to the athletes for there for eastern metro region in lane three So it does look like it's going to come down to a really close finish. And a nice strong run by the athlete from Eastern Metro region at the moment in the inside lane. They're going to almost come up to the final change very closely there. So Eastern Metro just a slight edge in front. And that looks like a very strong run. I don't know which of that is. Is that Lachlan, I think, there we've got out in front at the moment from Knox? And our, our big one of our Berwick athletes there from Gippsland Country Region. So really strong running by Lachlan there out in front at the moment. And also the GCR team as well. We congratulate both our teams and all our centres that have actually presented or represented in the multi-class events today. We'll be seeing them again in the afternoon session. But that's a great performance by both teams. So unofficial time for first place for Eastern Metro Region of 2 minutes 45.59. So we did mention before we will be ending our morning stream in just a moment. So we do encourage those watching on YouTube to make sure that you do subscribe and basically set yourself a reminder for the afternoon session. Same for Facebook. If you are joining us on Facebook, we thank you for joining us in the morning session. And if you are rejoining for the afternoon, make sure you click through onto the afternoon prompt to join our session. Just to explain, sessions do have a expiration time and that's why we do um, provide a morning and afternoon. Our afternoon is gonna be a bit of a longer one um, and we don't want to have the stream end too soon or abruptly. 
and you miss out on anything important in some of the events. So once again, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you take the opportunity to grab some lunch like we will in a short break. And we'll be returning to the live stream between 12.20 and 12.30. So if that's a good guide for you, we look forward to seeing you then. If you aren't returning, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.